<laughs> I know him! I know him! Are you ready? Are we rolling? Can you hear me now? Yep, ready? Alright, here we go. Three, two, two one. one. Godfather of Sports Radio. Here's Tony Bruno. Did you ever notice when Monday comes and you have to start work at three o'clock and you're up at nine o'clock? that those hours between nine and three fly by as you try to prepare for broadcast festivities? Did you ever notice that, Robin? Uh, why, yes. Yes, I yes. have. I was because, actually up before you. And the bottom line is, you know, because a lot of stuff has been happening today. So the advantage of doing an afternoon show is that you can catch up on a lot of stuff that's happening as of this morning. You know, because when I did mornings for all those decades, you know, you're basically recapping what happened the night before. And stuff happens in the morning. It happens 24-7. But the bottom line is we have a lot of stuff happening today. Uh, and I'm not even talking about the nonsense in Holly in, in Washington with Supreme Court rulings and all the armchair Monday afternoon quarterbacks who are legal scholars who are reacting to a 9-0 Supreme Court decision. Uh, just cry. Wait, wait, Put your hold head on. Just, I just have a question. Yes. Just, yeah. You know. Nine oh, that means unanimous. Well, right? it depends just, I'm just on checking. It I'm depends checking. on your what your definition of unanimous <laughs> yeah. is. And now uh, it's the, the thing about politics and the, is that people just have no clue what they're talking about. Again, I was a journalist forever. I, I studied political science. I know the system of justice. I know how the Supreme Court, when a when a Supreme Court in the state of Denver, Colorado, decides that they want to take any presidential candidate off their ballot. Uh, guess what? It, it gets appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. And if you didn't know this, the U.S. Supreme Court is higher in the pecking order than the Denver, Colorado, Colorado Supreme Court. So when the Supreme Court rules 9-0, you know, it's not like it's a split decision or it's 5-3. Then you can see people, but 9-0 and people are still crying? There's no crying in SCOTUS action. There's no crying in the Supreme Court. Hey, Tony. Yes. <laughs> I don't. I want to know if anybody notices a few little changes. We got changes. Yeah. If what did were... I do? I didn't get a haircut. I didn't shave. No. I you... showered. But what change were you talking about? You showered. Oh, that's very nice. No, of you. I didn't shower yesterday. Oh, you I lied. I lied, but I didn't have time for showering. <laughs> um. Um. There's a little bit of a look. It, the different. You look. got the look. You got the look. Um, a little bit of a yeah, different look. Yeah, it's crisp and clean. On the on the TBSN uh, social media apps that are playing the video. Yes, we got the um, scrolling. We got the scrolling chat right yeah, on the, the chat, side of the screen. Which means I love lady, scrolling chats. I saw them the other night opening up for uh, uh, Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. <laughs> they were the opening <laughs> act new here at a, lo- a local bar here in the have Cape you, Have Coral, you come Florida. up with a name for me yet? No, I haven't, Robin. Damn I don't. It, Tony. <laughs> um, but yes, so if if you are watching uh, this, the fact that I have the screen up on the screen, the I have the uh, screen. And this me. color blue actually looks good on me, doesn't it, Robin? Yes. This is my favorite color blue. The fact that I have the chat up on the screen means means I can't see it because it's so damn small. No, you can, can still read it over here. But they, can I bring it up on my screen why, too? Yes, you can. Okay, that's what I just want to be able to see, Robin. And that means that I'm really asking, I'm trusting everybody to to somewhat behave. You don't have to like, you know. Oh, behave. Be be completely clean because we're not clean ourselves as tony just attested to well, we're clean uh, but um we <laughs> mangle mush tony peeing in the fan does not count as a shower no Ew. it doesn't no peeing no. in the fan yeah we're not peeing in the fan tony. Uh, i peed in the pool i'll pee on the beach i'll pee against a tree if i have to go but peeing into a fan yeah, that would be messy. Seriously, who does that, as Gary Radnich once said back in the Bay Area? But anyway, Robin, where were you going with this? We have the screen going. We yeah, have no, the, we, all kinds of so tweets and messages. Once again, and, yes. I'm asking everybody to share, like, yes. subscribe, follow, everything that you can possibly do and make sure that everybody knows about the fabulous uh, – um, whether it's if whether you're listening on the app, tell your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, 
X, uh, Twitch, no matter where, just let them know. Gracias. Thank you, Robin. No, thank you. Now, Meanwhile, Tony, we got a lot of stuff. Yes. Of course, uh, there's a couple of big stories involving Philadelphia sports. And if ESPN is leading with it, that means it's not just a Philadelphia story. This is not a Philadelphia show, but obviously I'm from Philly. A lot of people are listening in Philly. And so we're an alternative, but we break all the news. We don't break it, but when it breaks, we fix it and put it on the show. But the big story today, and one of the reasons why, you know, I was, uh, I was rushing to get the last – parts of the show together is because I watched the entire Jason Kelsey retirement. And again, Jason Kelsey, his brothers, you know, a lot of people know Jason Kelsey because if you're not a sports fan, you remember the whole Travis and the, and the, the relationship thing, and they've got their own podcast. And I mean, the, the Kelsey brothers have become an international sensation yes. now, right? Whether you like them or not, that's your decision. The thing about Jason Kelsey for me as a guy who grew up in Philly and watched Jason Kelsey's entire career, even when we weren't living in Philly for the last couple of years, it's pretty hard to dislike this guy. You know, your opinions on Travis and the whole, whatever the hell, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> and his girlfriend and all that stuff, that brought a lot of people to the NFL because of Travis, Travis Kelsey's relationship. But remember, before you get into all the celebrity and all the you know, hobnobbing with glitterati and stars. These guys are regular guys from Cleveland, Ohio. They grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I really, I was breaking up too, you know, because there's nothing wrong with grown men his being emotional. His speech was It over wasn't even a speech. It was yeah. a 60-hour breakdown. 60 I mean, a 60-minute breakdown where he thanked pretty much everybody and talked about the importance of so many different things other than winning a Super Bowl once in his career, other than being a pro bowler, you know, and a, and a guy who's played in we so have, many games. And I have tons of clips. Yes. Uh, we can't play the entire 60-minute. No, 60 it's 60 minute minutes long. And, and I mean, I don't even watch 60 minutes anymore because it's, it's but garbage. Have, but, but I have I'll my listen favorite. to Jason Kelsey for 60 minutes any day. Tony, I have my favorite clip right here. Um, let me just change over to the video. If you're watching on video, you can see this. But this might have been. But every, you can hear it. You don't have to see yeah. it. Yeah. This might have been um, yours and my favorite clip from from the Jason Kelsey news conference that just happened uh, an hour just ago. An hour ago. Ready? Yep. I won't forget Nick Foles having the game of his life on the biggest stage possible, and the biggest dick on the team going up to Doug Peterson and asking for the Philly special. And Doug Peterson having the biggest balls in the stadium. <laughs> to say, yeah, let's do it. And that's the amazing thing. That's somebody who taped it off a yeah. TV screen, right? Yes. But we have clean cuts. That's actually Barstool Philly. I, I okay, so it. Barstool Sp but Philly this, dude the reason why is taping his television screen yeah. and then posting it while you can hear him masturbating in the background. No, no, that was Jason Kelsey. Um, no, but you can tell crying. it was recorded from a TV screen, yes. Robin. But uh, but I love, I'll never forget Nick Coles having the biggest dick on the team. Yes. I mean, that is just so perfect. That's why they called him Big Dick Nick, Robin. Yep, I know. What's wrong with you? You know, you lived through that era. Yeah, I mean, I have so many cuts. It's just hard just to Just don't play cuts from TV shows or from people recording no, it I at know, home. I, I could have recorded it from home, too. I was watching the whole thing on the Eagles Network. Well, they didn't. The Eagles fed the, the That particular cut is not available anywhere else. Yes, it's, it is. It's they're, not, they're being posted now. And with all due respect to Barstool Philly, the guy sitting at home in his underwear, just like Jason Kelsey, except he probably didn't look as good. And I don't know the Barstool Philly guy. He's cool. But the bottom line is this. You can't be taping your TV set and then putting it up there. Get the real feed, like this feed I have right here. This is, to me, another one of the great cuts, and we'll talk about it. But coming up on the show, in addition to Jason Kelsey retiring and the Cavaliers tonight, as our buddy uh, buddies over there at uh, – LFG show talked about tonight. The Cleveland Cavaliers in their NBA game tonight, guess who they're going to honor? The Kelsey brothers. So I guess Jason and his brother, who were both there today, today at the news conference in Philly, Jason was sitting there next to his mother. He was crying as his brother was crying. I mean, it was really a great, you know, most, most athletes, and he was reading it from his phone because he wrote 
an absolutely brilliant summation yeah. of all he wanted to talk about. And unlike me, who left out the most important part when I gave my honor, not retiring from sports, but when I won my honor uh, as, uh, for the Tony Bruno Award, I forgot to mention Robin at the end. But he did not. He did not. He saved it for last. He talked about meeting her in a Buffalo. It was a Buffalo uh, ball. It was a billiard parlor yeah. on, uh, on, on Chestnut Street. Buffalo billiards on Chestnut Street. He went in there one night, and that's where he met his wife, Kylie. And they fell in love, and they've been married. Now they have three beautiful girls. So he talked about his wife at the end. He talked about Jeff Stoutland, his coach. You know, he talked about everybody that he needed to. But you very, very rarely hear a guy call his offensive line coach. Obviously, he's a center and offensive lineman. But he says the guy who held his career together Mm -hmm. through all the turmoil, he said he had a terrible 2016 season. I'm summarizing. Terrible, because I took notes like we used to do in journalism school when you'd go to a press conference and you'd write down the things. Uh, You know, he talked about his dad and his mom. His dad was a steel worker in Cleveland, and he would go watch him. Sorry. Is that me or you? No, that was me. Okay. So he'd say he'd go watch his dad as a steel worker in Cleveland in the hot molten steel going right over their heads, and they can feel the heat of the steel before it's poured. And then he talked about his mom. His mom, who was the first of her family to go to college and then moved up from a bank teller into a a, a vice president. So he learned a lot from his family. And this is the one cut where he talks about his family, which I think was really, really cool. Thanks for coming, guys. Whoops. I got to do it. I'm sorry, Robin. But that's the problem. When I keep doing things where I try to listen, when I try to listen to something without this. Pause the video so you don't miss it. Okay, hang on. Okay. Um, <sighs> step by step. Now switch it I up. understand, Rob. In the last 15 minutes when I'm preparing for a show, uh, I yeah. always forget to do this because I have to listen to it on my computer, and then I have to make sure it goes through the audio board. So I apologize for that. That's on me. But if Robin the, would remind me before hand, we went on the air. Left-hand side. Go I know sound. where it is. Sound. I know where it works. Okay. <sighs> Here we there go. There you go. All right. Now let's go to uh, Jason Kelsey. Already in progress. I know. I'm going to open it up, Robin. Relax. Go ahead, Jason. Thanks for coming, guys. We'll see how long this lasts. And so this all brings us here to today, where I announce that I am retiring. Where I announce I'm retiring from the NFL after 13 seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles. And today, I must admit, I am officially overrated, vastly overrated. But fuck, it took a lot of hard work and determination getting here. I don't know what's next. But I look forward to the new challenges and opportunities that await. And I know that I carry with me the lessons from my time here. And that forever. And that forever we shall all share the bond of being Philadelphians. That's all I got. And that was an hour, and then he goes, oh, and then his, his, his mom, his brother, Travis is there. He hugs him, then he hugs his mom, and then he hugs his wife, and a bunch of other people were there. And that was just a snippet, and it came from the Philadelphia Eagles plus sight. <sighs> came from the Eagles' sight, so that's why it was clear, as opposed to yes. taking videos of people take, recording from their television sets. I only do that when I'm watching NFL games during the season, and, you know, there's some crazy play. And I said, oh, I got to record that. And then you go, everybody runs and posts it on the Internet. That's why I do it. Most of the time I'm not recording off the TV because it sounds like crap. And this is what we do as professional broadcasters, Robin. You know what I'm saying? Um, are people – I just want to make sure it's, there's some people that are saying that the volume is not right. On the, on, the, on the video? On the stream. So just let me know. Is the volume too low for you guys? Because it should I, be. Everything sounds fine to me. Yeah. 
But anyway, Jason Kelsey is the fifth center in NFL history with at least six All-Pro selections. The other four, Jim Otto, Bulldog Turner, Dermani Dawson, and Jim Ringo, and every single one of them are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, there is no question, and this isn't me being a Philadelphia homer, that Jason Kelsey is a stone-cold guaranteed lock NFL Hall of Famer when he's done five years from now. 36, all 13 years with one team, seven Pro Bowls in 13 seasons, first team All-Pro for the sixth time in 2023, proof that he played at an elite level until his final snap, even though he admittedly said during his news conference that, uh, that 2016, he was a disaster. He was playing horribly. The fans were down on him. And then luckily, Jeff Stoutland was the guy who pulled him out of it and got it all together. And then obviously in 2017, that's when the Eagles went on and won the Super Bowl because that team played with Doug Peterson you know, and, their, and their star quarterback, Carson Wentz, went down. And then Nick Foles comes in and saves the day and becomes the Super Bowl MVP. So that was one of those fairy tale seasons, Robin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, you were there with us. We were in Minnesota because we go to all the Super Bowls. We were watching the Eagles in Minnesota winning their first Super Bowl. And it was funny because during his speech or, or whatever you want to call it, conference, uh, he mentioned that in the Super in the Super Bowl parade, a woman came up to him with ashes from a family member who missed being able to be there at the parade, and right. she had promised him that she would bring him to the parade. Even at, We had the same experience during the Super Bowl when we were doing our Super Bowl party at the Town Hall Brewery. Yeah, right there um, in Minnesota. And, was, and they made right, it not, into, Right down the street from the stadium. We made it into an impromptu Eagles bar, and there was a family sitting right next to us that had brought a photograph of their father with some ashes um, for the exact same thing that they yep. wanted to be. They wanted their dad to be there, who always wanted to see a Super Bowl win. And so, I mean, it was a very emotional. Time. Yeah, and again, I, you know, I'm I'm a grown ass man, but I've never seen the Eagles win a Super Bowl. I did see them win a championship in 1960, but I was eight years old, and so before the Super Bowls, you know, there were NFL champions. And the Eagles were teams that, or a team that won two NFL championships before the Super Bowl area. The Cleveland Browns, who have not won a Super Bowl, won NFL championships. Same thing, you know, with a lot of teams that haven't won a Super Bowl. So when you're when you're a long-suffering fan, and fans in Cleveland and places like that in Buffalo, you know, who are waiting, and many generations have passed who haven't seen their team win a Super Bowl, especially Bills fans, Cleveland Browns fans, long-suffering fans of franchises. You know, when you see, when those people see the ones who are still alive to see it and watch their first NFL champion or a Super Bowl, technically, which is the NFL championship, it means a lot. I mean, I was, I was emotional. Again, is it because it's stupid sports? No, it's because you remember all the years and all the bad times and bad teams and bad memories. But the one thing, even though you can remember those, you never forget when your sports franchises you know, when the Chicago Cubs won, when the White Sox won, when the Red Sox finally won, when the New York Rangers, after the 1940 chance, finally won in 1994 a Stanley Cup. We're talking about when you go generations, generations between watching a team win a championship. For example, Philadelphia, the 76ers haven't won a title since 1983. In New York, the New York Knicks have not won an NBA championship since 1973. So look, we're talking 50 years. And I guess 20 years is considered a generation now. So if, if you go 50 years, and obviously a lot of people aren't even 50 years old, you know, Cowboy fans haven't seen a Super Bowl not just win or a Super Bowl appearance since 1996. So there's long-suffering fans in a lot of different places. And when your team wins as a fan, all you can do is celebrate and have great memories. And today, Jason Kelsey's Unbelievable, a 60-minute conversation. He was, he was reading from his – he had to type all that. He put that into his phone, and there he was sitting it and trying to check it out. So bottom line is it's, uh, it's good. It was, it, was, it, was, it was interesting to watch. Obviously, he was losing his composure. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why is a grown man crying? Grown men cry because they're emotional, especially when you're ending an unbelievable career and you know you've played your last game. And I think that the biggest, the biggest uh, part of what Jason Kelsey, his emotions, was what a lot of athletes don't get a chance to do, is start with a team who was a sixth-round pick out of Cincinnati 
and then end with that same team all in one, all with one organization. And that's a lot of athletes. We always hope that they do that. Remember, we know, we know, like, for example, let's go down the list of athletes. Joe Montana didn't finish his career as a 49er, right? He moved on. A lot of players move on after they win championships. Those who can stay and play an entire career in one city, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't happen every day. And so that's one of the other things that I thought that I thought was special about the Jason Kelsey, I call it a news conference, but his reliving his life story and how he got there, you know, thanking his mom and dad, thanking his family, you know, no cousins. He talked about the family is very small. And his brother, he and his brother, and you saw the documentary. And again, it's not about whether you like, whether you like the player, you like the team. You know, the Kelsey brothers are now a brand. But I don't look at them as a brand. I look at Jason Kelsey because I spent a lot of time around him. Robin and I would see him all the time in South Philly when he would go with his dogs to go to, to the uh, to the what was it the Pet Smart right near our house when we would go there to get cat food. We'd run into Jason and his wife and his dogs going in there. I mean, he became part of a community. And when an athlete stays in the community that he's played in, even though he's from Ohio and they're going to honor him tonight, believe it or not, at the Cavaliers game with bobbleheads. The Cleveland Cavaliers are going to have Travis and Jason Kelsey bobblehead night tonight. I'm sure they're flying up there, right? I mean, it's only an an hour and a half flight from Philly to Cleveland. So they'll be in Cleveland tonight because the people in Cleveland respect the greatness of the Kelsey brothers because they played at the University of Cincinnati, graduated a year apart. So it's one of those great sports stories that you don't see every day. So much of it is negativity. This team sucks. That team sucks. Yeah, and, and Matt Raposo out there in the Livermore says, how long, look how long the Warriors were without a title before Steph Curry and the gang arrived. Exactly. I mean, look at the teams now that are still waiting for a long, long time to even sniff a championship. So that's what makes sports fun because it, it brings the community together. It brings the cities. Nothing brings any city together. Politics don't bring cities together. You know, nonsense in the streets don't bring city together. It's usually sports that galvanizes the relationship of fans to the teams. And most fans don't even know the players personally, but they feel like, especially with a guy like Kelsey who plays his entire career in one uniform, people respect that. That's why Travis Kelsey will always be. And again, I hate doing Mount Rushmore shows because the, you know Philly sports has had great players in each individual franchise. I mean, you go to Dr. J, Moses Malone, so you can't have a Mount Rushmore when you have multiple iconic players, historical players in your in your in your franchise history. So the, the whole Mount Rushmore, but as far as a center being acknowledged as one of the greatest players in Philadelphia sports history, I don't think there's any doubt that Jason Kelsey is in that group. So you can make it for the best four, the best ten, the best franchise. To me, very few players have had the impact that Jason Kelsey has had, and he's a guy who played center for the Philadelphia Eagles, a guy that they didn't think nobody thought. He was a sixth-round draft pick. Nobody thought he was going to be a great NFL. He was a lineman. He was just. He said, I was a big, fat kid, and all I wanted to do was play offensive line. So he did. He thought he was going to be a guard. He turned out to be a center. And with great coaching, uh, you know, you see it at the end of a career. But I'm glad he gave Jeff Stoutman a lot of love because, you know, most players – they talk about the head coach, and he already gave love to Jeffrey Lurie, the owner, and all the different coaches he played under. And then, of course, he saved the the ending part of it mm-hmm. to thank Jeff Stoutland, his offensive line coach. Yeah, he said he wouldn't even be there anymore if it hadn't been for Stoughton. Exactly. So it was a very – I mean, if you're a fan and you like to watch it – and the good thing is you can watch it live now. And I was watching it live on PhiladelphiaEagles.com, and that's where I got it. So – uh, he's one of those guys. I mean, he goes down to the Jersey Shore. He hangs out in bars with people. You know, he's a regular guy. You know why he's a regular guy, Robin? Because he grew up as a regular guy, and he never forgot that his dad was a steel worker mm-hmm. and his mom was, you know, uh, worked in a bank. So, jeez, uh... <laughs> mangle mush. Come on, man. <laughs> You hear all about, we have to read it out. Loud. This is Mangle Mush. I said, he said, we were talking about bobbleheads for the Kelsey brothers. And he goes, I want two Trumpinator bobbleheads, one to stay in the box and one for my dashboard right next to my buddy Christ. Oh, jeez, come on. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, the good thing Our about the Tony crazy. Bruno bobbleheads, I just got Stone Cold Steve Austin ones because every single bald person, wrestler, all their bobbleheads look the same. I think they just took one head, yes. a guy that's bald, and then they put the goatee on him, and they represented uh, every single bald-headed goateed guy when they made a – because they don't, they don't sit down and model for bobbleheads, well, there right? Well, there was a bobblehead <laughs> made for you and – Gary Radnich. Gary Radnich. Yes, and I think that that's the same day they, they used one of those old bobblehead molds, and then they just painted your your goatee. And the problem was my goatee was dark at the time. Yeah. So if you have one of those, I will gladly paint the white in for you to make it more representative of the modern day Tony Bruno era. But anyway, we got a lot of stuff. We'll play more Jason Kelsey. But today we also have a special, a couple of special treats on the show <clears throat> because uh, over the weekend. Uh, one of my great friends and one of the great broadcasters and analysts and guys who was a specialist and a guy who was an, a real insider, Chris Mortensen, who I, I knew from 1992. How many years ago was that now, Robin? When I first started working at ESPN in 1992, that's when I got to meet Chris Mortensen. And he was 32. the gold standard, the gold standard of NFL insiders. You know, ESPN had a lot of great insiders. But guys like Chris Mortensen set the way, paved the way for Adam Schefter. Adam Schefter, I remember when he was in Denver, and he was the local beat writer for the Denver Broncos. But he was also the president of the baseball, the Football Writers Association of America. And when Chris Mortensen, uh, when ESPN expanded and had more programming, they brought Adam Schefter in, and Adam Schefter became the heir apparent to Chris Mortensen. So Mort was a legendary figure. Everybody who ever was around him and worked with him, they loved the guy, and we lost him at the age of 72 over the weekend. But luckily, Andrew, uh, my buddy Harry Mays and I, a couple of years ago, that was the last time I had a chance to talk to more, we had him on our show on Sirius XM. So we will play that interview, the last interview I've ever done with Chris Mortensen. And in the interview, or conversation I like to call it, we were goofing on Phil Sims. Because one of the good things about working at ESPN is I got to meet so many other great people's people like Phil Sims when he retired, he first worked at ESPN. Joe Theismann was up there. So I had to be had to be. I was part of a big newsroom where Joe Theismann would come in and throw footballs around across all these cubicles while people are working. And then Phil Sims would come in and they'd shoot the shit and bust each other's chops. And then Mort would get into it with Joe Theismann and would get into it with Phil Sims, and then I'd get into it, and it was just a fun time because none of it was, was you know, none of it was hate speech. None of it was just fun watching great players, great athletes, great broadcasters, great analysts who knew everybody in the NFL. Chris Mortensen knew every GM, anybody who was involved in the NFL, every agent. So when he got stories, you knew they were legit. So we'll play that interview a little later on in the show. And then we'll have Phil Sims on live. Phil's going to join us because obviously he has great memories about Chris Mortensen. And, and actually, I always love having Phil on. Chris mentions Phil in that last yes. interview that you did with him. So. Exactly. So we'll play Chris Mortensen posthumously, the last interview, and then Phil Sims, uh, who was mentioned in the interview. And then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll reminisce with Phil Sims and talk about other stuff going on like the NFL Combine and everything else happening. So busy, busy Monday. Uh, we'll have a well, baseball updates. Of course, uh, we got the championship week in college basketball. Depending on the conference, you know, they'll start tomorrow night. Actually, they'll start this week in some of the smaller conferences. And then by the end of the week, we'll be getting closer and closer by next week. Uh, and uh, and uh, then on St. Patrick's Day, which is Sunday, March 17th, that is Selection Sunday. So we're in the final two weeks now, the college basketball season, and we're now doing, of course, championship week, which basically takes two weeks. As I mentioned, some of the conferences start tonight. Others will continue, and then it'll all be over. On September 16th, that's Saturday, and then Sunday the 17th is Selection Sunday, when we will have the big dance, baby. We're going to tell you who the PTPs are and who's in the bubble. No more bubbles, no more last four in, no more last four out. We'll be done with that stuff. And we'll get down to the needy, greedy man. All right? Meanwhile. We're going to go to break. We're going to break? Let's break. We'll come back. We'll take your calls. You know the phone number, right? Is the phone number still the same, Robin? Two, three, uh, three, five, two. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. It's, it's catching. 
Three five two two three four Tony. That's three five two two three four eight six six nine. I'm not laughing at you, Robin. I'm yes. laughing with you. Yeah, I'm sure. No, because I have the same problem. I can't remember the three five two area code. And where is the three five two area code? Have we determined which state city that's in? Uh, I don't because even it's not know. a common area code. No, it's not. We're going to tell you something good. I don't need Shaka Khan, but I'd love Shaka Khan. But we'll tell you something good. Because that's all we care about is good stuff. We don't like the bad stuff. It depends on what your definition of bad is. Sometimes bad is good. You know what I mean? But it's going to be good today. Because the Shaka Khan once sang, back in the Rufus days, tell me something good. Tell me that you like me on the Tony Bruno Sports Network. Sing it, Shaka Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me that you love me, yeah. It was meant to be Tony Bruno on the Tony Bruno Sports Network. When you're looking for a treat to freshen taste and keep breath sweet, get double smoothness, flavor too. Get the gum that's double good to chew. Double your pleasure, double your fun with double the double the Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Parade Float Driver. Mr. Parade Float Driver. Real men don't drive shiny sports cars. Real men drive old school bus chassis covered in paper mache, pansies, and puppets. Slow and easy. Why? Chicks dig floats. Just ask the Carson County Pork Queen waving from the back end. Lovely Pork Queen! You drive with sweaty palms. One wrong move from you, and Paul Tilly's old-timey barbershop quartet is history. Oh. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, oh thoroughbred of the thoroughfare. When it comes to parades, you really float our boats. Mr. Parade float Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Over-the-Top Carb Counter. Mr. Over-the-Top Carb Counter. Brushing aside such follies as work and family, you wisely adopted carbo counting as your primary pastime. I'm crazy for carbos. From breakfast through dinner, you tirelessly record every precious carb, hoping it might all add up to your target number. Zero. Hold on to your dream now. Was that artichoke you ate 13.5 carbs or 13.6? Better look it up while you help yourself to another package of bacon. I like it. So crack open an ice cold Bud Light, oh Count of Monte Carbo, because the only thing better than meat and potatoes is meat and meat. Mr. Over the Top Bud Light Beer at Isaac Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. Now back to the biggest sports network on the planet, the Tony Bruno Sports Network. Yeah. I'm getting in a chill mood early on this show, Robin. You know what I'm saying? Coming up, mentioned Phil Sims and the Chris Mortensen conversation from a couple years ago. Zach Wheeler and the Phillies have uh, worked out a three-year, $126 million extension, Woo-hoo. basically putting uh, Wheeler in uh, rarefied air with the other big $42 million a year players. Pitchers, of course. There's other players who make more. But Zach Wheeler, they locked him up today in uh, in a good way, not in a bad way. Mang- uh, Kevin Stone saying that Robin must not call her aunt very much who lives in Ocala. She doesn't know that area code now. Yeah, Robin, how about that? Your aunt does live in Ocala. We've been to Ocala. Yes, except she has a cell phone, and it does not have the – just like your area code on your cell phone. Is so her cell phone out. doesn't have the Ocala no. area code? No. So now our great people, that's why we have the greatest uh, – we have the greatest audience 
since the Jackie Gleason audiences back in the day. He says, uh, where was it? Matt Raposo said, 352 covers Gainesville, Ocala, Inverness, Dunellen, and parts of central Florida, according to the web. Ocala, of course, is in there. Not the Duval. That's more, it's more in the central part of the state, right? Because isn't Ocala in the central part of the state, Robin? Yeah. Yeah, we've been to Ocala. We've been to Gainesville. So, what up from the 203, says 9176ers. Yeah, uh, uh, Trev from the 203 says, Tony's like your boy. I live in South Florida, but I'm still 203. Yeah, my phone number is still 310. And I haven't lived in California since 2011. How many years ago is that, Robin? Yeah. I know. I, I said there wouldn't be any math on the show. That's uh, so stop. Well, is it 12 years ago, 13 years ago now? It's hard to believe. I can still remember being on the beach in Venice and seeing whack jobs. By the way, did you see the whack jobs on the beach last weekend in Venice? But they were good whack jobs. They were women taking their clothes off and doing crazy shit. Yeah. Now, when we lived in Venice, uh, we would see people doing crazy, but usually dudes, you know, like deranged dudes who were walking around, but they were clever. The people who bum money on Venice Beach are the most clever people because they don't lie. They'll hold signs like, I really, I just need money to buy weed. You know, they're not going to go lie. They're not going to write, need money for a sandwich. No. They don't want money for a sandwich. The other ones that they do is like, um, uh, we have pictures of a couple of those people. We got to find them. Like I'm an alien from outer space. (laughs) Um, and my family left me behind. I need the money to get back home or something. I mean, like all these crazy things. And I would give money to those people because at least they were clever. Yeah. Not just saying, Hey, I need $5 to get a foot long. Uh, because you can't get a $5 foot long anymore. Maybe never, ever, ever again. Anyway, let's get it back to whatever we were talking about, Robin. So, the Jason Kelsey thing's a big story, but there was there was another. I called interesting... it. Now there was a lot of people that say, "Oh, he's not going to retire. He's not going to." Let me give I you said, one of these. Then Robert. I did. Uh, can you, you know... turn my machine on, please? Oh, thank you. Do you know what I said? I said that it wasn't because. Why did of you what... cut it off right away? I didn't. I'll give you another five seconds. How's that, Robin? <laughs> Just to show you that I'm not here only looking for mistakes or reasons to give Robin one of those, which I won't hit because then it would actually be one of those on the official record of the show, which is sent to the Library of Congress, and then the only way you can get it again is doing a FOIA request. You so, know what a FOIA request is, Robin? Yeah, it's uh, public, the public information thing. What does FOIA mean? F-O-I-A. Uh, Federal Order of Information Robin, Act. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me give you one of these now. You earn this one, Robin. Uh, it's the Freedom of Information Act. Oh, Freedom of Information Act. Oh, I knew Boya. it was the Information Act. Not Booyah. It's the Freedom of Information Act, where you can then go and subpoena and then uh, throw somebody ass, somebody's ass. So asses. the reason why I said that um, he was going to <laughs> retire was not because so much of what he said, but I saw an interview with his wife, and... I could tell that she she was like, "That's it. He's done. He needs to be done." It, it wasn't even an interview. It was a, it was on a, one of their their documentaries, mm-hmm. uh, and you could tell that she was like, "This is it. I'm worried about him. I don't want him to get hurt." Right. But all wives say that about yeah, players. Yeah, but you could tell that they had had conversations about no, it. No, no kidding. I mean, that's that's he saved it for he saved his yeah. wife for last, which is a smart thing to do. You know, because but because he, I'll give him credit because he had it on. He didn't bring out a bunch of scripts and rattling papers. He had it on his phone. And he didn't he even brings need glasses. Out his fo- well, he shouldn't need glasses. But I think he'll have the eight hundred dollars to get lenses if he yeah, wants to at the lens crafters or whatever the hell you go. America's best. I got new. I got new glasses. I got these, and then I got my other ones too. Well, Robin, you're the only person I've ever seen that had new glasses and is excited about them. I like glasses. You know why? I don't. Um, one, it's so it's because I, being light, fair skinned, I need to be wearing glasses. Everybody should be wearing glasses out in the sunshine because it's really bad. Yeah, for your exactly. Eyes. You can you can exactly. get glaucoma and stuff easier. But two, when you have glasses on, it hides the wrinkles and bags under your eyes. Oh, is that what it is, Rob? Yes, is it does. Why? Okay. I look younger with glasses than I do without. 
Yeah, it was in the documentary, which we watched on Amazon, and it was yeah. great, the Kelsey. And, or the one just on Jason Kelsey, because it was one that was Kelsey about Jason, and then his brother makes a couple of appearances in it. You know what I mean? Jason Padua says, love K- Jason Kelsey, the mayor forever I cried today. Yeah, we, uh, we were getting a little weepy-eyed, too. Not weepy-eyed. I mean, he, he, was, he was really, he was doing, and it wasn't an act. See, that's the thing. Jason Kelsey, there's no act there. He's the same guy all the time. Uh, Tim from the 203 says, how many sets of glasses does she have? Is the answer? Nope. Nope. I only have two. That's not true, Robin. Well. That's not true. I only have two with my current prescription in. By the way, Tom W. says, I'm painting a foyer today. Not a foyer. You get it, Robin? A foyer? Foyer. Now, do you call it the foyer or foyer, Robin? I say foyer. I say fugazi. (laughs) Who says foyer, really? It's the foyer. Foyer. No, it's the foyer. I know Ocala's horse country, right next to Wellington. That's where the great beef comes from, and the beef Wellington, but not horse meat. You don't eat horse meat, although some people do. And remember when they made horse meat legal for a couple of years? I remember in Philly, in New Jersey, they made horse meat consumption legal really? for a while. Yeah, I don't know if it's legal anymore. The o- uh, only foyer I call the foyer is the main area of my high school. Is it foyer or foyer? See, it's spelled the same way, right? F-O-Y-E-R is pronounced foyer and foyer, right? Yes, yes. Um, here is the official as of March 20th, 2023. Federally, horses can legally be slaughtered for food, but because they're classed as an amenable species, mm-hmm. horse meat cannot be sold or shipped without inspection, and there is currently no legal process by which that inspection may take place. However, mm-hmm. in the U.S., consuming horse meat, horse meat is completely legal. So... It's legal. I can't eat Mr. Ed. I'm sorry. I know. I cannot eat horse meat. I, uh, 91 S uh, 91 L Sixers says uh, I had horse meat in Sardinia at a cafeteria style place. I remember when it was a big thing in Jersey. People, oh yeah, horse meat sales, and then you know again. I could do I, it. I, I, I don't want to eat Lassie, and I don't want to eat Mister Ed. That's because when I see a horse, I or think Lily. of Mister Ed or Lily. You can't eat. You can't eat pets. No, you can't eat pets. And the horses are so. Can't eat flipper either. No. No. Nobody no. eats dolphin. I do eat dolphin, which is, of course, called dolphin, but which it's te- it's basically. So conf- Fisherman, why did you have to tame, name two different, completely different species of fish the same name? Because the dolphin fish is really the, uh, it's really the uh, Dorado. Yeah. It's what it's called. Yeah. Well. It's the beautiful fish that's green and yellow when you first take it out of the water, and we love it. I mean, I love the fillets of the, I call them. Uh, I don't call them dolphin, though. It shouldn't. It should no, be tuna. I mean, it's not tuna. It's Dorado. Okay, call it Dorado then. Stop calling it dolphin. I, I don't beg, call it dolphin. I beg all of you fishermen out there, stop calling dol- Dorado dolphin. Because it's confusing and it makes me sad. The, the amazing thing, though, they're a beautiful fish when you catch them, but then they lose their colors really quickly. Yeah. You Is know, that the one that has sort of like that, that really square forehead? Yeah, and the beautiful um, fish. And if you're fishing for them, they're usually like it, you go out into the ocean and you'll see some like floating weeds and shit. Uh-huh. Or what is it called? The, the, the seaweed. Algae. Uh, no, seaweed? not sea, not oh, algae. Seaweed. Oh, seaweed. And that's where they like that. They're hanging out underneath there, and you put that big boom, and you get yourself a big ass dolphin or dorado. El we got to put up dorado. a picture of the dorado fish. It's mahi mahi. That's what we call it. When we go to a restaurant, there they are. Let's put that up there, Robin. The picture. The Dorado fish, mahi-mahi, widely called Dorado. It's, it's also called dolphin, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a pompano dolphin fish. It's got a lot of good names. It's good eats. 
Mahi Mahi. There they are. You see them, Robin? I Look do. at that baby. They That's are good goodies. eats, man. They're delicious. You know, you can get them up to seven feet and 88 pounds. Monsters. But they get, I, I like the nice size ones. But they're beautiful fish. Real nice. Real nice fish. So the mahi-mahi, or common dolphin fish, is a surface-dwelling ray fin fish found in offshore temperate tropical and subtropical waters worldwide. Also called dorado and dolphin. It's one of two members of the family Corifinididae, the other being the pompano dolphin fish. So Man- there you have it. Manglemush adding to the fish knowledge on today's yes. show, uh, saying Chilean sea bass was used to be called dog tooth fish, mm-hmm. but they couldn't sell it under that name. Right. So they changed it to just Chilean sea bass. And then BV Films says, I like macadamia nut crusted mahi mahi, so which is we. our favorite from where did we used to go? Dukes of Malibu. Dukes of Malibu. Dukes of Malibu. It was our Robin would go there once a week and get the Parmesan herb crusted Macadamia, Ma- macadamia nut, nut crusted mahi mahi. Oh, so good! Oh, I can still taste it. And then they had the, the you know what? You know what they made had a it? Sweet coleslaw on the and side. And the beurre blanc. And the beurre blanc. Beurre blanc. Beurre blanc. And if you've ever tried to make beurre blanc, <laughs> it breaks. You got to do it right. If you it's one are... of the hardest things to make. Wait, wait. Beurre blanc. If you are beurre listening blanc. on the app right now, <laughs> you need to. You have to see Tony say. Say it again, Tony. Beurre blanc. Blanc. <laughs> Blanc. He just, Blanc. He's just like, <laughs> his mouth is just throwing out words and not pronouncing them correctly. Wait, let me put this little video up right here now. Dorado fishing in Southern California, Robin. I know you got a member of your family that goes out fishing all the time out there in the Pacific Ocean mm-hmm. and get some nice big fish. Get some big... Uh, Tony Bruno. Yes, let me, let me show a little bit. Hold on. Di- before you go do yeah. anything, did you use the same tab that I had muted specifically so that you wouldn't be able to play anything on that tab and you could read the YouTube things? I don't know, Robin. I'm just trying to play a video. I didn't even have to... Have, <sighs> uh, 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 okay, well, there's no sound coming on that. I didn't play. I didn't start yet. Okay, no, there's no sound going to come on that Why? because I muted it on purpose. All right, this guy's catching. That's not That's not a mahi-mahi. <laughs> He's pulling in some sort of a swordfish or a... Uh, what is that? Is that a marlin? Oh, now he's got – that wasn't a do- – that, that's a lie. This guy's lying. He said he caught a mahi mahi. No, it's a blue marlin. Nobody eats blue marlin. Come on, man. Why not? Why, why, why wouldn't you eat blue marlin? You don't eat blue marlin. Why, but tell me why. Like, does I thought have- this was a mahi mahi thing. It's a good – you could do it, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not eating marlin. I mean, I would think that it would be very similar I'll eat to tuna. Shark. I told you, that I ate the freshest tuna ever. I, I was out tuna fishing. We caught a tuna, and I actually ate a piece that was just raw? sliced out raw with a little uh, wasabi. Is that, is, that the, that, is that the only time you've ever had raw fish? Yes, <laughs> because it was so fresh. I mean, it was literally, it was still moving. It was still you know warm. The, no, it was, it, was, it, was, it was good because you're on a boat. You're out in the water. You get that salt air. See, Manglemush saying that marlin is yummy. It probably is. The next time, there's a bunch of people, Manglemush and Kevin Stone. The next time you guys go out fishing, let us know. We want to go with you. And somebody, you know, because to me, marlin are trophy fish. And this guy writes, whenever I have to keep a trophy when I don't want to, I think about the thousands of other fish I've released that most people wouldn't. It's no consolation, but it balances my rationale. The one thing about when you catch fish now and you want it mounted, they don't use the actual fish anymore. No, they do a mold. They use them. They do a mold of the fish because it used to be that you know they had paxidermist that would do everything, but doing a fish now they just use a plastic mold and they paint it to look like your fish. Jesus, what's wrong with these people? Anyway, enough about the mahi mahi. Let me see if he catches one here. No, this guy's catching blue marlin, but they're huge. Nice fish. As J- Jez, what's his name? Uh, the guy who used to be on Sunday, mo- Saturday mornings on ESPN. The guy with the Tennessee hat. What's his name? I don't know. Reminds me when, when Dangerfield said on Caddyshack, tell the chef I can see the marks where the jockey's been whipping it. Remember that? They were talking about horses, Robbie. Not Babe Winkleman, no. It was a guy, Bill Dance, I think his name was. Wasn't that the guy on ESPN, Bill Dance? And he would be on Saturday mornings on ESPN Outdoors. 
That's it. That's the guy. He wore a Tennessee volunteer hat. There he is. Rob and I got to play a little build, build dance right now. We're doing our fishing segment on a Monday. And we got some bloopers, and that's the best I want to hear. I want to see some build dance bloopers. You ready? Tony? What? What? Um, I just told you I cannot play any of yours right now. Why? Because I'm going to explain it again. This I, to turn this thing off and let is, me play that is, thing. No, I have to go over there and I'm going to have to redo everything that I just did because your <sighs> YouTube is not going to work the way. Ah. Oh. Then what is it? What is it going to take for me to be able to run my own damn videos, Robin? We keep buying more equipment and I can't do shit. Let's get let's get more machines in here. Because you use the same tab that I. Used. I don't want to use the same tab. Why can't I have my own separate channels? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? That tab is muted. Okay, unmute that, that son of a bitch. No, do not use that tab because that tab is supposed to I don't to even be drink tab. I hate it. I don't like any diet soda. <laughs> if you want to use a different tab. I just want to play a video, yes, Robin. Then you can open up a new tab. I don't have who I ain't nobody got time for that. Well, you're I'm full, I'm laser that. focused on this broadcast, Robin. You're going to have to make Jesus. See what I have to deal with every day? Now, do not close this tab. Okay. I'm going to pin that. This way you can still read. <laughs> there. God Almighty. Never mind. Screw Bill Dance. You know who I'm talking about. He's the guy with the Tennessee volunteer hat. So I at least had that right. And by the way, people are admiring my great, great knowledge, Robin. Of what? Of everything, <laughs> especially yeah. fishing, home, no. well, home, it's home improvement. It's certainly not on how to work <laughs> Robin, audio on computers. Robin? <sighs> yes, Jason Padua, <laughs> the legend. Make sure to nominate him for Radio Hall of Fame. Radio Hall of Fame has nothing to do with running shit from your computer. I was, I was running my own board. I had 17 carts lined up. When I was doing a morning show where I had to hit news, sports, traffic, the top mm -hmm. of the hour, CBS News, or else it would go all over me. Don't tell me about running equipment. I ran massive audio boards. That's not what it is anymore. I know. And what it is now, you What are it is is what it is, as the great, uh, <laughs> as the great Charlie Emanuel once said, what it is. I have them right Ed, here. Ed what, it is, what, it is. what it is is what it is. Ed Nasta, how do you do it, Tony? Goodness day gracious. in, day out, day out. You need a vacation. <laughs> I need to take I a need, fishing trip. I need to go out fishing. I take need me a fishing. Remember those ads? They were great ads. Take me fishing, where the little kid would say to his dad, Take me fishing. Oh, okay. Now I have to find that. I, will I find haven't been fishing in forever. I got a boat and I haven't been fishing. It's an outrage. Do the crabbing off the dock at least. I need to go fishing. I need to catch some big boys out there. I don't mean fresh water. Listen, I've done fresh water my whole life. I go out opening day at trout season, which Hold is on. stupid because they're just, they, just, they just put them in the water two days and then everybody goes out there to catch trout. I have a take me fishing commercial. Tony. Oh, can you have? Yeah, because I don't want to get emotional. After Jason Kelsey, do I have to now get emotional again, Robin, with a take me fishing Let's PSA? See. Let's go to it now. You gonna play this, Robin? Yep. Okay. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! We're hearing reports of a fish on. Fish on! Get the net! Ooh. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish <laughs> Wow, that was a good one. I never saw that yeah, one. Yeah, I'd never seen that talking one. ducks and talking fish. That was good. <laughs> You've never heard of a talking fish? No, that's, uh, that's no, Mr. That's Ed. that's talking Ed, Mr. Ed. Anyway, Take Me Fishing, that's a great campaign. You should take your kids fishing. That's bonding. And that's another thing Jason Kelsey talked about. You know, the influence of his parents and his dad and his mom. You know, you got to have good family relations. And I don't mean that kind of family relations. Well, that is important, That's too. the Manson. I'm not talking about Manson family relations I mean, or some of these other. By the way, speaking of family if relations. If you don't have good family relations, you don't have kids. You're damn right. But uh, speaking of family relations, we do have 
a Courtney Kardashian update today, Robin. And you know, I've been calling for the demise of the Kardashians for decades, but people just don't want to listen to me. Every time I hear, the Kardashians are finally going to get canceled. And again, if you want to watch them, go right ahead. And then I read that it was, a, it was a lie. It was bullshit. Listen, don't pull any false flags about the Kardashians being canceled. Let's be honest. They're never going to be canceled. There's too many of them. They're procreating. They're like, they're like, <laughs> they're like roaches. You know? And I'm not saying, I'm not calling them actual human roaches. But you know, when, when you get a nest of roaches, you just can't get rid of them. No matter how much you try to get rid of them. Because there's too many of them. Because now not only do you have the Kardashian clan, then you have the Jenner offspring too. So there's so many of them, Robin. It's completely out of control, and I don't know how we can stop it. But Courtney's still out there. Now, which NBA baller is she banging now? I can't keep track of, uh, of who's who or who's zooming who. I can't keep track of who she's balling either. Courtney Kardashian. No, the, the ballers are who she usually uh, sleeps with. And honestly, I don't really care. I know, but I saw this headline, and I want to know what this is. Not because I care about Courtney Kardashian or any of them. Courtney Kardashian today. She's a socialite. <laughs> Just remember that. Okay. All right. So she's 44 now. Oh. And she's married to Travis Barker. She's still, no, she's still married to Travis Barker? I guess so. I thought she was banging all these different dudes. Yeah, they're still married. But now, apparently, she just announced today that she is autosexual. Autosexual, Robin. Now, we've heard of all the different varieties, you know, uh, homosexual, bisexual, right. trisexual, which I am, uh, bicoastal and trisexual. I, did, I, I looked it up. Autosexual? I, I was know. autosexual when I was a young kid. Yeah. That's why I used to bang chicks in the back seat. Is that <laughs> autosexual? Is that autosexual? No. Yeah, where is my rim shot on that, Robin? I, that one was worthy of a rim shot. It was worthy of a rim shot. <laughs> autosexual. <laughs> what is an autosexual? Is a person who has sex with themselves and who is aroused by their own body. What? Yes, that is what autosexual. That's what says. autosexual. Isn't that self-sexual? At the same time. Yeah. What is what is autosexual? Isn't that mean that they are so an autosexual person feels <laughs> sexual attraction primarily towards themselves? Well, who doesn't? If you don't love yourself, if you can't be with the one you love, love yourself. I think someone is who is autosexual experiences little <laughs> to no sexual attraction toward other people. And Courtney Kardashian is one of those people. Wow. <laughs> I feel wow. I feel sorry for Travis. <laughs> I mean, isn't that just mean that she's masturbating? That's the I, only I thing don't know. I, I've never heard the term autosexual before. Uh, we got transsexual. We got uh, what are the other ways you can be sexual? Uh, bisexual. <laughs> I mentioned bi, favorite. tri. I mentioned uh, homosexual. I mentioned uh, transsexual. Transsexual. I mentioned uh, there's a lot. Of, look up sexual, Robin. Not sexual healing or not sexual chocolate or white chocolate. Sexual. Different types of sexuality. Because we, we have to make a, we're going to have to make a new, uh, a, a, a new uh, encyclopedia of sexuality. There's so many. Like, if you look it up now, it seems like every... If you looked it up now, and How then five minutes later looked it up again, <laughs> there would be, like, more on there. Pansexual. Pansexual. And I love... Listen, I, my pan... That pan okay. that you made of the beautiful eggplant parm last night, yes. I was getting a woody watching that. So my, does that make me pansexual? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, here we go. This Wait is, a minute. This is breaking news now, ladies and gentlemen. According to Google right now... You believe Google after the whole thing with their stupid AI guy? Yeah, no. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. But the uh, I'll just quickly, as fast as possible, read through, and I'm not going to even sh tell what what's what because there's so many of them. Okay. Pansexual, scoliosexual. Scolio? Gynosexual. Wait, what's scolio? Is that somebody who bangs your back? <laughs> scoliosexual. <laughs> is a person who is attracted to anyone who is not cisgender. Oh, for, f excuse my language. Gynosexual, gynosexual. Gynosexual. Uh, people are attracted to women and folks with more feminine gender presentations. 
Yeah, I'm, in I'm, other I'm words, attracted to them. I think you're gynosexual then. <laughs> Demi romantic. As long That's, as they're chicks, and not that there's anything wrong they, with the other this stuff. This is another sexuality, apparently. Demi what? romantic. I love Demi Lovato, but then you see what happened to her. I know. Remember when she was hot? It's so I'm sad. I'm no longer demi sexual. But demi, demi gloss, they'll get demi glaze. I love a good demi, demi glaze on a hot chick. Demi romantic? Is that somebody that just really rom- sucks at being? He's like only half ass romantic. Demi romantic. Demi ro- fluid. Fluid. Yeah. I'm sexually fluid. You got to have a towel around, though. You know, you don't um, want that to get closeted. That, you know, clean the mattress and stuff. Closeted is one of them. Closeted. Lesbian. Well, heterosexual. We know yeah, that. Well, demisexual. I just mentioned that. Yeah. No, that's it's different than What's demi romantic. What? Oh, demi romantic and demisexual, demisexual are different. Air. <laughs> wait. Aromantic. Arom. <laughs> oh, can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I smell it, baby. I smell it. <laughs> gray sexual. Gray oh. sexual. You sleep with aliens. Don't they call the grays? No, or maybe that's when you're like, you're attracted to people that are gray haired. Hey, See, this baby. is what we should do. We should just, we should just like guess what it is based upon the name. What it is is what it is. Is Charlie Manuel's um, again? I have to play Charlie twice in one this show. Is, this is one of the questions. What it is is what it is. Yeah. One of the uh, sexuality is questioning. Questioning Robert, section. we broke. Let's blew through the top oh, of the hour break. Shoot. Okay, let me just really quick. Allo romantic, coming out, queer, straight, androsexual, bi curious, polysexual, sapiosexual, Sapio. autosexual, monosexual, allosexual, <laughs> and autoromantic. Good God Almighty. If you're not confused by now, then I don't know what is, but that's just insane. Uh, there's way too much. Bottom line is this there's only one thing you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. And this is scientific fact. This isn't an opinion. This is proven science. Boys have a penis. Girls have a vagina. Boom! Bam! And there you have it. End of story. And now you know the rest of the story. We're coming back. Phil Sims is going to join us in a little while. Chris Mortensen. What kind of sexual song is this, Robin? This is Flowetry. Oh, Flowetry in motion, man. How about a little sexual healing? Come on, come on, come on. Sexual healing, Robin. When I get that feeling, I want sexual healing. Put your hands on your computer right now. I can't say on the radio. Put your hands on your portable electronic device. Can you feel the vibration that I'm emanating today from the chateau? Well, it's not really. That's 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 Tim Brandon's plan. We don't call it the chateau. From the condo here in beautiful Cape Coral, Florida, where it's... 82 degrees today. Yeah, baby. Yeah, we're coming right back. Tony Bruno Sports Network. Feel it? All you gotta do is say Ladies and gentlemen, you've been waiting, and now it's here. T-B-S-N. The Tony Bruno Sports Network. Make some noise. The Tony Bruno Sports Network. Download the app. Tell your friends the game is on. T-B-S-N. Oh, that was a quick break, Robin. We, yes, didn't, even, we didn't even miss a beak or a stroke, if you know what I mean. Uh, but um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> now, All right, I'm sorry. it is a little bit after 4 o'clock right now mm-hmm. on the East Coast, yeah. and I would like to invite anybody that would like to talk about a certain sports topic, give us a call at 352-234-8669. That's three. Well, spitching is sports. <clears throat> three. Five, two. We gave you a baseball two. update. Don't interrupt while Bumps I'm up. giving out the phone number. I'm waiting Tony for Bruno. the pauses so I can slip them in there. Uh, slip you, it you'll right get, in. You're going to confuse people. Okay, I'm sorry. Three, five, two, two, three, four, Tony. That's three, five, two, two, three, four, eight, six, six, nine. Give us a call. Ask Tony any sports questions, anything that you would like to talk about that happened over the weekend. Well, um, you know, you had the Caitlin comments. Clark thing. Everybody's talked about oh, that. Oh, I know. Uh, we t- I talked we talked to the Beth uh, 
the fabulous Beth Faber, whose daughter is um, in is doing great in basketball. I think mm-hmm. she's a ju- freshman in high school, or she's still in. She's tall. High. I know that. And uh, she's doing. And Caitlin Car- is her favorite player. She is so. And I think that there's a lot of young women out there who are looking at her as inspiration. And Absolutely. All great athletes inspire yeah. people. But as long and the good thing about Caitlin Clark is that she's an actual woman putting up amazing numbers. And the fact that there are still guys stealing titles away. Did you see the one in the swimming over the weekend? Uh, it's the just... dude won a championship and standing on the gold medal stands. And then the person who was in second place was an African-American woman. So there you have a white dude pretending to be a woman taking a title away from an African-American woman who should have been on the stand in the number one spot. And the fact that all these people who are feminists and speak up for women and women's marches and women's right and women's libs, the fact that they are not out there protesting this shows you how confused the population is. And the people who are fighting against this are the ones now being demonized. Yeah. No, I mean, what, what, kind of a, what kind of a crazy world is that where women are not defending women's rights to actually compete against other women? And I'm not talking about pool or other sports where you can pretty much be on the same wavelength. I mean, billiards, you don't have to be stronger to win in pool, no. right? No, no. Uh, even in bowling, if, you if, don't have to be stronger to get a strike. If there's no strength involved, then it's an equal playing field and it doesn't matter. But if there is any kind of strength that is involved, yeah. then it is not fair. Biologically, not fair, period. Exactly. Boom. There you have it. I mean, we settle things quickly here. You know what I mean? Yeah. By the way, there's uh, good news on the NFL. We have breaking NFL news. Of course, we're getting to the nitty-gritty time now where teams have to make their decisions on free agency. We had the combine. Everybody looked great. Everybody put up a lot of weight. Everybody ran fast. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and five-time Pro Bowl receiver Mike Evans have reached an agreement on a two-year, $52 million contract that includes $35 million guaranteed. His agent, uh, Derek Gilmore, told Adam Schefter today, Evans was was supposed to enter free agency or was eligible to enter free agency next week now has a real chance to start and finish his career as a buck for life. And we were talking about Jason Kelsey last hour, finished his career as an eagle for life, and now a big, big signing for the Buccaneers. And the question now is, does this entice the Buccaneers to bring back a quarterback who had a pretty damn good year? And he, too, is a, is a free agent. Baker Mayfield. So that's the story now with your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, you know, the, the things are going to start to fall into place now because teams that really want to keep a guy know that they have to get down to the business now or run the chance of losing him next week. And so that's the good news. So we'll keep an eye on the, on the Evans situation and all the other situations going on uh, in the NFL. There's a lot of free agents are out there trying to find gigs. And now, of course, uh, Mike Evans which makes a lot of sense. I mean, seeing Mike Evans go to another team at this stage of his career, you know, he's probably a year or two away from retiring. So that's good. They weren't, they tried to work out a deal before the start of last season. Discussions were tabled until the end of the season when they had a September 9 deadline pass. So he's 30 years old and uh, he had one of the best performances of the career. 13 receiving touchdowns. First time he finished the top of the leaderboard in touchdown. So good news for Buccaneers fans and good, good news for the NFL because, you know, I like seeing players stay with franchises because you don't see it that often. And again, if they want to leave, they can leave too. But I think this is a good, I think this is a good sign. You know what I mean, Robin? I, yes. And like, let's be honest, Mike Evans hitting free agency, there would have been many suitors for his talents. The Chiefs were supposedly interested Other receivers out there, T. Higgins in Cincinnati, Michael Pittman, of course, Calvin Ridley, Odell Beckham Jr., who may not be going back to Baltimore, and Michael Thomas of the Saints. So a lot of big quality names out there. Uh, And so we'll keep an eye on that and the signings that are occurring and will be coming fast and furious. 
No, not that franchise, which has had way too many movies, and I don't get it. Do we need another Fast and Furious movie, Rob? No, no. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. It's done. It's over. <clears throat> it's over. I've actually never seen any of the Fast and Furious Yes, movies. you have. You've no, I haven't. I've never watched one, and it's, I've never gone to a theater to see it. And again, if you want to watch them on continuous loop, 24-7 until your head explodes, go right ahead. I only give my opinions on this show. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with me. If you think the Fast and Furious franchise is one of the greatest of all time, so be it. Or as, yes, I'm going to use it again, and Pete Shepard's going to be pissed. So let it be written. So let it be said. Or is it done? I forget. We went over this last week. Yes, I like that. Well, how about a porno? The Fast and the Curious. Oh, that's been done so many times. Come on, man. <laughs> can you uh, and can you have more than one of those? Fast. Oh, yeah. The Fast I mean, and you the know, Curious The one, pizza two, delivery three, four, guy, the pool boy. They're all Fast and Curious movies, right? Woman sitting out at her pool. The pool guy comes. He gets that big skimmer. Uh-huh. Skimmer? And does what I do. He immediately starts getting the leaves, and then the woman's watching him, and he's, uh-huh. you know, he's got a nice sinewy tan. Nice sinewy body, sort of like some maybe one of your favorite uh, radio personalities. Okay. And then you know what happens before long, boom. And then you got the pizza delivery guy, mm-hmm. or who, my favorite, who ordered extra anchovies. <laughs> you know. No, no, no. You don't order extra anchovies. No, oh, you don't remember that? There was a movie. Was it a porno? That, um, um, when McDreamy was was oh, what was his name? What was the guy McDreamy? <laughs> Uh, Skimmer? Extra... I barely touched her. Oh, no, there thank was you a, for that one. <laughs> there was an extra anchovies movie, Lover Boy. Lover Boy? Yes. Lover Boy was with... Um, the guy who played McDreamy. and the, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey was Patrick McDreamy. Dempsey. He was McDreamy. I know yeah. that. And he played... It was called Lover Boy, and um, he took a job... As a pizza delivery guy, and then somehow or did he another, bang somebody? No, somehow or another, ended up being like if if a woman ordered an extra anchovies on her pizza. What did that mean? That meant that she wanted something extra, extra, and then he got paid extra to have sex with her. Yeah, but that was the whole thing. He was, he you was, know, that he conjures was a, up a lot of different visuals that I don't think. Uh, speaking of lover boy, Robin. You know what I. You know what I'm. Thinking, it was a movie right? from 1989. I just for some reason I I. I don't remember the. Remember I don't this. remember the movie, but I remember the great group Lover Boy. Remember them? <clears throat> Everybody's working for the weekend. Robin, can you play this now? I have to get past it first. Am I set to do this or no? D- I it, know I got to skip the ad. Right. Then I'll make it bigger. I I have you on, so I don't know. Okay, why let's it's play not... this now because if Is you your... don't like this song, I know I got to unmute it. Here's the video now. Right click. Oh, my God. Do, 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 I will do. play it for you. Please Tony. play it for me, Robin. <laughs> I can't multitask. No, you I'm cannot. I'm not a chick. You are not <laughs> capable. Lover boy, uh, turn me loose. No, everybody's working for the weekend. Oh. Uh, working Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Except the weekend's over. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on everything else, but give me a little crank because this was a great song. Underplayed. I think Pete Shepard plays this every once in a while, I right? I think so too, yeah. Great song. Give me a little lover boy. I think he plays it on Friday. Extra anchovies, everybody. Come on. Extra anchovies, baby. Yeah, Pete does play this. If you That's why Pete's the best. If you Mornings here on the Tony Bruno Sports Network. <laughs> Joey B. Watching Robin get frustrated at Tony <laughs> with the right. Right click, LMFAO, hilarious. We feel your pain, too. There's no pain. Yes. I'm trying to make this show the best damn short sports show, period. (laughs) Damn it. Um, (laughs) Kevin Stone says, I believe the dude was in high school while delivering those pies. You know, he might have been. It might have been. I mean, it might have been. Is that early uh, pedophilia, maybe? Yes. Yes. Well, it's cool but now, I, I guess, to some but people. I, I but can, I can totally remember this movie. And I'm, if I rewatched it again, it would probably be so many levels of inappropriate. But, um, yeah. By the way, I have breaking news from the Combine, the leftover wire. Now, of course, the Combine, if you were watching men running around and sweating, uh, I was too, but it was outside when I was working on my boat. <laughs> but I love this story. Marcel-Louis Jacques, ESPN. Is the 40-yard dash becoming obsolete at the NFL Combine? 
In the past 20 years, the 40-yard dash has become synonymous with the combine. If combine drills were a musical group, the 40 would be Mick Jagger, Beyonce, or Harry Styles. Its popularity has expanded beyond the field at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It's featured in video games, created viral memes, and even inspired a 46-year-old Tom Brady to turn back the clock and try it again after his infamous first attempt 24 years prior. All of this is remarkable, says Mr. Shunsanjak. The 40 is no longer the most effective way to determine a player's speed. The value it once had to teams has diminished in its 80-year existence as clubs turn toward other means, such as GPS tracking and analytical data, to fully understand how fast a player can move in football specifics. Situation, Joe. Yeah, we were having this conversation at the Super Bowl Radio Row. You mm-hmm. know with who? Irving Fryer. Irving Fryer was a track star in Mount Holly, New Jersey, before he became a football player. No. Yeah, and there were a lot of track stars who tried to become football players, and the one difference between a track star and a football player, yes, the track star can run fast, they could hurdle better than other athletes, but guess what? It doesn't help you catch a football. And we saw it with so many guys who were amazing track stars who went into the NFL, and then when they ran out there and were running past everybody, they couldn't catch the damn ball. So that's the reason, I think, the 40-yard dash. And now, you know, we had another guy do it over the weekend, you know, ran faster. People are running faster. It's not performing enhancing drugs. So is it obsolete? Then just not do the combine. A lot of these players don't want to go there anyway. They don't want to throw. They don't want to run. They don't want to... All they want to do is eat and pick up Instagram models in Naptown. And listen, I can agree with that 100%. But Jesus, nobody wants to do shit anymore, Robin. Yes. No, he doesn't have a high motor. <laughs> so anyway, where were we, Robin? Robin. The 40-yard dash. Yes, 40-yard dash. Is it obsolete now? Is it irrelevant? Let's go to the phones. <sighs> Tony, I have an update. <laughs> um, we we have been talking on... Is this a real update, Robin? The Tony Bruno Show has been talking about... It. You want to travel. Traveling is really, really important. We yes. want to travel more. We've been yes. we we've been talking about getting out of the country again and seeing something new. Mm-hmm. And the chive, the chive.com has an article today. Interesting things about countries around the world. The chive. Don't they have their own? No, that's the cheddar. The cheddar. Now there's so many ch- cheddar. And I'm like, oh, it's all cheese. Need, I thought need. the chi- I thought the cheddar was a cheese channel. No, it's yeah. just a cheesy news channel. All we need is another channel to be called the potato, and then we'd have a great baked potato, all three put together. Cheddar chives. And get speak, it? speaking of that, I got. I'm starting to. Pl- I cleaned up my garden, my outdoor patio garden over the mm-hmm. weekend, Robin. Yeah. You saw that. And and by the way, it really is Tony's because if I were yeah. to touch it, then they would. Everything die. would die. Die. So here's a little interesting thing about England. Mm-hmm. During ad breaks on certain shows, Mm -hmm. they have what they call TV pickup when the British national grid, so the electric grid, Mm -hmm. gives an extra boost of power to manage the sudden influx of people getting up to switch on their tea kettles to make themselves a cup of tea. What? There are people whose actual job it is to predict exactly when those pickups are going to occur. Because that's how that's how much tea. Like so, they, everybody has electric tea kettles nowadays, right? Right. And that takes a lot of power. So during commercial breaks on certain shows that are really popular, there is somebody whose actual job it is to predict when the uptick in electrical grid is going to be. Is that when people listen to this show? We know when the uptick's coming. I, I'm sure. Um. Here's an interesting fact about Finland. Are they listening in Finland today? Have you checked, oh, the, uh, check, did you check but, the map? But um, if you are listening in Finland, which, oh, yes, you are. You are listening in Finland. Beautiful. If you are listening in Finland. i got to work on my Finnish. Please tell me if this is true. In Finland, there are 5.5 million people and 3.2 million saunas. 
Wow. That's amazing. How many fish? So they love fish in Finland, and it's good for you. That's why they have that. But Finland's not a Mediterranean diet type country, but they love fish. Well, yeah. Because it's plentiful. It's very plentiful. Here's an interesting tidbit on Australia. Uh, interesting fact. Are we spanning the globe today to yeah, bring you the constant just, variety? And we do have Australians listening. Um, here's an interesting fact. One of their prime ministers drowned, and to commemorate that him, they named a pool after him. They named the pool after him? And he drowned. That's kind of Oh that's come kind on. of like That's a downer, more, Robin. Yeah, that's supposed that's to be a morbid. positive day, not a downer day. Why would you name like yeah, like that's like that's just weird. That's biz- that's bizarre. That's weird. That's what? By the way, I have a, a really good story to report today involving an NFL player. Do you remember Braylon <laughs> Edwards? Braylon Edwards was a pretty good receiver in the NFL. Braylon Edwards. Remember him? He played for the Jets. So over the weekend, former NFL player Braylon Edwards stepped in and saved the life of an 80-year-old man who was being attacked in the locker room at a suburban Detroit YMCA. Wow. Quote, if it wasn't for that intervention, we could very easily be talking about someone's death, said Jeff King, the police chief, in Farmington Hills, Michigan. Authorities, meanwhile, filed an attempted murder charge against a 20-year-old man for the incident Friday at the rec center. Edwards, who's 49 now, says he was just minding his business when he heard a dispute about loud music. The noise escalates, and then you can hear some pushing and shoving, so you know what fighting sounds like, Edwards told WDIV-TV. But once I heard a thud, that's when I got up and turned around. He absolutely saved that man's life, King told the Associated Press. I've been a police officer going on 29 years. When these assaults are ongoing, really bad things can happen. The chief said the victim was in critical but stable condition at a hospital today, Monday. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald didn't mention Edwards by name, but said, I commend the witness who intervened, and we will seek justice for this victim. A vicious, senseless attack. And so give it up to to Braylon Edwards. He was a big star at at Michigan. First-round pick by the Cleveland Browns. Eight seasons in the NFL, mostly with Cleveland and the New York Jets. It's nice to see somebody actually stepping in rather than just starting to record it on their phone. Exactly. And Josh Donaldson, who won the uh, American League MVP during his 13-year career, 13 year career, announced his retirement today. 38, he made the announcement on the podcast of former player Sean Casey, or I call him the mayor. You remember Josh Donaldson? Mm-mm. 279 home runs. I knew you wouldn't, Robin. 1,310 hits, long-earned reputation. Someone who completed, uh, who competed with an edge. He really didn't, you know, he would just say, screw you. He would run into guys. He'd do all kinds of shit. He had a great year in Toronto, 2015, 41 homers, 123 ribbies, scoring a major league high, 122 runs. He got 23 out of 30 first-place votes for the MVP, and he finished ahead of Mike Trout for the award. Wow. Finished in top 10 for the league's MVP four times. So uh, he's packed it in. Obviously, uh, he played for the Twins. Guy was a good player, but a little uh, a little w- wacky. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know what I mean, Robin? Nothing wrong with that. No. I'm hey, a little wacky, too, every once in a while. Tony, uh, we're coming up against a break here. Mm-hmm. Um, on the return from the break, we are going to play... Uh, the episode, the the segment that was the last interview that you did with the fabulous Chris Mortensen, rest in peace. Harry Mays and I got a yep. chance to talk to Chris Mortensen. We were on the Sirius XM channel, on the Dan Patrick channel a couple years ago, and uh, we wanted to call Mort and talk some football and talk about uh, legality that was going on in the NFL at the time. But of course, Phil Simms' name came into the conversation because we were living our days at ESPN. 32 years ago, and then it turned to Phil Sims and all of our other colleagues. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. We're going to replay it. We have, I haven't heard this interview since a couple of years ago. And then I said, Robin, we have to have, we have, to have interviews that I've done with Chris Mortensen on the tape. And luckily, Robin saved the archive. So we'll play that for you as our tribute to a great man, a great reporter, a great family man, and a guy who was a, a, a pioneer when it came to NFL. Now, there were people before him, of course, when there were only a few channels doing NFL reporting. But when it came to the ESPN 
on NFL on ESPN, it was Chris Mortensen who was the go-to guy as the NFL insider, paving the way for many more to come and to become really something every Every radio and TV station, especially sports channels, had to have that NFL insider. Mort, to me, was the best of all time. Now, obviously, Peter King, who just retired, was also an insider, but he worked for, you know, the big boys, NBC. Chris Mortensen worked for ESPN, a cable network. So we will play that interview, and then we'll have Phil Sims join us live after that, and we'll get his reaction and his thoughts about Chris Mortensen. On this Monday, Tony Bruno, Miss Robin, it is the Tony Bruno Sports Network. Was meant to be Tony Bruno on the Tony Bruno Sports Network. There's a big bold flavor to the West, a heritage built by strong men with a zest for life and a taste for adventure. That's the West, big bold untamed. That's the taste of big red chewing gum, big bold untamed, big red. The gum with the tall taste that refreshes in a different way that makes your mouth come alive. Big Red. To the gum called Big Red with a bold, clean bite and the big, strong flavor that's bound to hit you right. Big Red. To the gum called Big Red that's apart from the rest that captures the spirit of the big. Salute you, Mr. All You Can Eat Buffet Inventor. Mr. All You Can Eat Buffet Inventor. You've given us the real American dream. A tray, 15 feet of food, and a little sign that says, Go nuts, buddy. Well, pitch me, I'm dreaming. Pushing side dish innovation to its limits, you offer creamed everything and 400 flavors of gelatin. Feed it frenzy. If there's beef, you'll chip it. If there's chicken, you'll fry it. And if there's gravy, well, then everything's going to be okay. Oh, thank God for the gravy. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light buffet, boy. You know the way to a man's heart and a few hundred tasty ways to challenge it. Mr. All-You-Can-Eat Buffet Inventor. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Now back to the biggest sports network on the planet, the Tony Bruno Sports Network. One of my great friends and one of the best in the business, and he's still cranking it out on ESPN with the Mort Report, the great Chris Mortensen with the latest on Troy Vincent and what's going on with the union. Mort, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Tony? I heard you had big Phil Sims on recently. Yes, indeed. We went at it again like we used to back in the uh, in the 90s at ESPN, but I love Phil, and we all love Phil. He's just, he's just a fun guy to talk to, and 
you know, he need, and his son Chris is doing a great job too. So I, I even no, think Chris, I think Chris has a better, better future than Phil right now. Well, I, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, let me just see if I, I got this right. Now, when you had Phil on, did, he probably negotiated more than one segment with you, didn't he? Oh, because absolutely. He has, Abs he has to have time to talk. He's got a lot of stuff on his chest and his head, and he, he needs to get off. Exactly. So, Funny, when we texted him, he said two segments. Yeah. He actually put down, and I, I wrote, Phil, we, ha we can do 25 minutes. Because, you know, you own radio stations over the air, and you get six minutes, and you got to try to get everything in, and then they rush you off, and he's, wait a minute, I'm, Phil wasn't even getting started until like eight or nine minutes into the conversation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's my man, Phil. Oh, absolutely. We love him. It's hard not to like Phil Sims. I mean, there's just, you know, no matter even if you're not a Giants fan, it's hard not. And, and by the way, I think there are a lot of Giants fans and Giant people in the organization who probably don't like Phil Sims. Or he doesn't like, well, uh, enough about that. More. Let's get down to Troy Vincent. <laughs> because Troy Vincent, I just said this before we came on, that I think of all the, uh, the players' representatives, I think Troy Vincent right now is head and shoulders above everybody. Now, I'm not trying to grade him. I'm not doing the Mount Rushmore of player reps. But I think this guy is handling this whole thing brilliantly especially when it comes to some of the rules and the one particularly you were talking about was the the instant replay review of personal uh, pass interference calls and he pretty much laid down the, he threw the through the book at the league about pass interference reviews yesterday well he threw it at himself which i'll give him credit for now toy is I, i'm not necessarily a big fan of toys as, as, as you clearly are uh but uh at the same time, I like people who, who will take accountability. He's in a position where he can step forward and, and take it, and it was a bad idea. Uh, and the, you know, when they when they voted it through uh, a year ago, although it was a one-year experiment, and it, it didn't work, it was a joke. And I personally feel that listen, there's got to be some safety net for the call that you know that we had in the Saints Rams playoff game a couple of years ago, but. You know, you, I, I just, you can't legislate judgment calls. I, I'm sorry, uh, because it's, it's, it's one of those things where a game is played by humans, coached by humans, officiated by humans, and if you had a sky judge, it's another human. If you have Al River on or whoever else in New York trying to mess with it, it's another human. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. So, yeah, it was good for Troy to say it was a disaster. Guess what? You know, the Titanic sunk many years ago, too. I already knew that. Yeah, you're right, though. He did say we all made a mistake. We rushed into it because of the, the fiasco in the playoff game in 2018 with the Saints and the Rams. And so everybody wants things fixed. And every offseason, that's when the Rules Committee looks at things to fix. But they're not even going to do You mentioned the Sky Judge, which is what the XFL did. Remember, the XFL, you know, the short-lived XFL, they at least showed the world that you can do it if you have a guy in the booth or a woman in the booth upstairs helping the officials on the field. Why do they completely reject that? Is it because the XFL did it? Well, no, the Alliance of American Football did it first. Right. The, the spring league of two years ago. And uh, I think that, uh, and, and Bill Poling was you know, in charge of football for that league. And, and as he explained, really, you need, listen, you need an experienced official in that position. And you have to develop them. And so... To do it knee jerk, uh, you know, I think the sky judge will, will come, or you having the guy communicating there down to the official will will happen. It's just they're just not ready for it to happen. In other words, there's not enough uh, competent retired or, or, or other officials yet, and that's what they need to get to, to deepen and widen that pool of competent people who can be up there and help the official, the referee on the field, make that decision. It's coming, but I, I really think one of the reasons right now is there's so much going on with this corona uh, virus that they have enough issues to tackle. I think that's one reason why 4th and 15 on the onside kick didn't get passed today. It's kind of like, okay, we, we, we're we constantly tweaking and changing things that we're really ready for. Maybe we ought to just step back and uh, and, and, and wait when the, for the time being right. Because you, yeah, Sky Judge was good, but you know what? Sky Judge did not get everything right either. Hey, Chris, uh, moving to some player issues, Jadavian Clowney allegedly or apparently turned down an offer from the Browns that was pretty significant. Uh, what do you think is next for him? Well, 
you know, it's Damien's free to make. You know, that's one thing about being a free agent. You can make your make your choices as to where you want to play and for how much. Uh, and you know, I think that Jadavian, you know, would like to see things develop here. I mean, this is a guy who's, you know, obviously a dominant force when he's on the field, but has been injured at, uh, probably too frequently. Uh, certainly wants to be able to choose where he plays. And uh, you know, Seattle still kind of had the door open there for a while, but you know, it's uh, you know that's what being free is about. You you get to make the choice. If, if, if it's and, and let's face it, it's May. It's still May. It's going to be June. He doesn't have to make up his mind right now. Nobody's in OTAs, uh, off-season programs. You know, training camp, will, will, we think, may start near the end of July. Uh, so he doesn't have to make that decision right now. By the way, Mort, we're seeing that the commissioner apparently a few moments ago announced that uh, he's going to continue the virtual sessions for coaches for two more weeks. So we're all talking about waiting for training camps to open and for the facilities to be reopened. So that's not going to happen now for two more weeks. Is that the latest today? Uh, yes, that is the latest. I mean, and that, that was the expectation. I mean, I think the coaches knew that. You know, it's going to be, you know, they pretty much felt like it, it would be you know, mid-June mid and maybe a little bit later until coaches are allowed in there. As you know, it's got to be, it can't be like 25 of the – Franchises are ready for their buildings to be open to their coaches, but seven aren't. It's, it's got to be equitable. And uh, and I think the coaches understand that. I, I haven't heard anybody protest that. And so I think they, they feel like they'll be making progress and, and trying to manage their building. I, I've heard a couple franchises talk that, you know, maybe, you know, even when a coach has come back, that it, it may be only a football personnel and a few ex key executives who are allowed in the building. I mean, there are there are franchises out there who are talking about you know putting tents up outside their their normal you know, permanent buildings because meeting rooms. Tony, think about this: position rooms. Now I, I just jumped to players, but I'm just saying it is like if you're offensive linemen or defensive linemen, the big body guys. You ever been in one of those meeting rooms? There's not a lot of space there, so yeah. there's a lot of like okay, we got to create some space. And then we're going to have to limit other personnel coming into the building. And certainly the coaches, coaches are able to, to, to work together. Uh, it's uh, the virtual meetings with the players, uh, a little more complicated, but attention to detail, especially for incoming rookie players. I think everybody understands that this rookie class, if you have high expectations for this incoming rookie class, you're probably, you're probably living in a fantasy world. Chris Mortensen joining us. Tony Bruno, Harry Mays here on Sirius XM and SB Nation Radio. The, uh, the other thing uh, that's coming up, well, one of the other stories is interesting, and I think you mentioned it. Analytics show that teams that went for it, since the NFL changed the whole onside kick rule, and teams are 0 for 14 that attempted expected onside kicks. In other words, they're down late in the game. Everybody knows they're going to try an onside yeah. kick. Right. Any team that did that failed 14 consecutive times. Now, obviously, earlier in the games when they're not expected, you get some surprises. Are they going to do anything about that? Because that is an unmitigated disaster as well, Mort. Yeah, no, I, I think something is definitely coming on that. I think they, they just weren't ready. In fact, this, the, the fourth and 15 rule we were talking proposal we were talking about that was tabled because it didn't have enough votes. Uh, I think one of the reasons why is all of a sudden they had two changes, you know, this week on the proposal. And so I think there's a, a feeling among owners saying, hey, if we're changing things at the last minute on the proposal, then the proposal isn't right. But I think, there's, I think it's going to get to a point where, yes, you know, having a couple of fourth and 15s instead of an onside kick, uh, you know, I liked it. The XFL did it. The, the Alliance Football League did it. They, they did a fourth and twelve. Uh, Alliance League, because uh, in their mind, the athletes weren't as good as the NFL athletes, but fourth and 15 is, is, is the right the right distance. And, yeah, I mean, listen, it was a – onside kick was a high-risk injury-wise. I mean, it's, it's guys blocking guys, a lot of head injuries, and, and I understand it, but uh, why they made those changes. But I do believe we're going to get to a point sooner, not later, where we have the option to go ahead – Pat Mahomes, since fourth and 15 is like fourth and one, uh, to try and convert that when necessary. Only twice a game, never in overtime, and it's, uh, you know, with the dead clock. Uh, I think that's coming. It's just not going to be this year. I think this year is 
really focused on, guys, we're just, we got to see if we can play football, the football that we know. Uh, let's, let's do that first, and then we can uh, address those things. Hey, Chris, uh, Carlos Hyde uh, signed by Seattle last couple of days. Devonta Freeman still out there, as is LaShawn McCoy. Uh, Eagles have interest, I've heard, in, either, in both guys. Uh, which, way do you th- which way do you think they'd like to go here? Uh, as much as they like uh, Shady McCoy, I would think that Devontae Freeman owes a little bit more appeal to them, but they're in pretty good shape at running back. Uh, but uh, Devontae Freeman is, uh, you know, probably has a few more miles left on him, even though he's been injured. I was surprised, to be honest with you. I don't know if you guys were, that uh, McCoy didn't have kind of more success with the Chiefs last year. Were you, were you guys surprised? Yeah, I mean, there were games that he was healthy he and they didn't even put him in the lineup. Him up. Yeah, yeah. So, so that tells you something. Mm-hmm. And I know this much. Every, everybody loves him. I yeah. mean, you know, like in terms of in the, in the locker room, in the building, Buffalo loved them, but you know, eventually and Andy Reid. I mean, Andy Reid has to love him, and he didn't use him at all for the most well, part. Well, everybody loved him, but Chip <laughs> Kelly. Well, yeah, Chip <laughs> Kelly didn't like anybody. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, but but consider what is but what does that tell you? And I don't know what tells you. Katie wants a little bit more money, but you know he he's got to understand. You're a running back. You're on the downside. Uh, and uh, my guess, that if you were picking, and I have not asked. Uh, the people I know there, the question, but my guess is you'd rather have Freeman. But now Freeman, you know, he may price himself out of the market too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we remember Seattle last week was talking to both Freeman and Hyde, and a lot of people thought Devontae Freeman was going to be their pick, but they, they obviously Devontae Freeman wanted more money, and they took Carlos Hyde instead. So we mentioned the two guys still available. Tampa's supposedly interested in Devontae Freeman as well right now. Yeah, and they, they're, they're familiar with him uh, because he's been in their division, and uh, you know, it's good when he's healthy. That's the problem. You know, he got the big contract. Now, I'm not saying they get injured because he got the big contract, but once he once he reached a certain plateau level uh, in terms of salary, uh, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you, you, are you willing to take a 75 percent pay cut? You know, you think you're the same player, and uh, other people don't look at you that way. And and uh, you know, but in terms of the Eagles, I mean, I, I like. I mean, there's a lot. There's not much. There's not much not to like about the Eagles' offense or the Eagles' team, to be quite honest right. with you. Chris Mortensen breaking it down. More, so there's always football to talk about. That's what's great about it. Even though we got going through this and they're trying to figure out training camps, we know that the NFL at least is on, uh, is, is on a schedule right now that September is still a few months away, and with the testing increasing everywhere now and, and the way people are finding out ways to test quickly, the EPLs coming back, and we see other countries doing their sports, and I think that puts more pressure on our country. If the other countries can do soccer and baseball and other sports, why can't the U.S.? And I think that's, again, they're not going to do what they don't feel safe, but they're also right. going to know that if they can, especially baseball, if they can do it in other countries, why can't we do it here without fans? Yeah, a couple things. Yeah, I think there are going to be fans myself. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be like 25% capacity or whatever it's going to be, but uh, bottom line is, is and the other thing is the NFL has to pay its players. They don't have the problems like the other because the, this collective bargaining agreement does not have a force majeure clause, another act of God clause. So the players get their money, but it would impact next year's salary cap. So they'll have to work something out there. But if, if the owners got to write a check for players to play, they're going to play. And, uh, and then it's just a matter of you know, how many people get in and how you work that out. But they're working on those details, and I think we're going to have a week one. Uh, we'll see what happens after week one, and we just pray for uh, – and you're right, testing is the key. Uh, and I think they feel fairly confident they're going to have plenty of testing without taking away from the public need for the testing as well. And, and the NFL Players Association is more motivated because they get a cut of the gate as well as opposed to baseball. Yeah, the, yes. But, the, you know, as you know, the gate is uh, – is not a big, you know, it's not as big a percentage of their revenue as it, as it is in baseball. So, no, I hear uh, I mean, you know, listen, the NFL, here's what I know. I'm just talking to somebody about this. Uh, you know, the NFL in the last five years, franchise values have gone up on average with 32 teams by a billion dollars each. By, that's the average. No owners lost money. Uh, they, they all, the revenues have been all good. Nobody's lost equity. They've gained equity. 
everything trends very well for the NFL, even though this will obviously not be the same level of revenues. Nobody's going poor. And the one thing you would not want to happen, I've seen happen, is hourly wage workers being impacted by a business that still has plenty of revenue. Hey, Chris, last one from me. Obviously, the media is pumping up the Browns again, and uh, they have yet to deliver. But you talk to people every day around the league. Uh, what are they thinking about the Browns this year? Oh, I think that, uh, people think they're going to be good. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, John Dorsey, the general manager who's no longer there, put the, was putting together a heck of a roster. We forget how good Baker Mayfield was his rookie year. Uh, I think that uh, Andrew Barry's come in there as a GM and uh, it's picked up nicely. I mean, you know, they, they've added a couple key parts, uh, and I think they're going to be very competitive. Their problem, it's the same problem the Baltimore Ravens have and, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, and especially the Bengals, is that it's a tough division. But I think, that, you know, listen, the Browns, the Browns last year were probably overhyped. Odell Beckham Jr. was part of the problem uh, because he couldn't, he, wouldn't, he couldn't practice. He was always hurt. He always said something hurt. So your quarterback can never be on the same page. Ask Tom Brady how he likes it when his receiver can't practice and he can't trust where he's going to be on a specific route. So I think they're going to be better. I think they're going to be in the mix. I like their roster. I like the quarterback. But I love their division, and that's not necessarily the best news for them. Chris Morton said, breaking it down, even this news that's happening as we speak, the uh, owners got together and said no 4th and 15. Uh, and so even though it's only the, the end of May, Mort, I don't know why they can't implement the 4th and 15 thing. It's not like they're doing it the day before the season starts. But I get yeah, it. There's uh, a lot. They have a lot to do. But I just don't get why they wouldn't, why they would table the 4th and 15 instead of the onside kick stuff. I just don't get that. Well, ta yeah, table just means you didn't have enough votes, votes right now. But... Uh, I really think that the last-minute changes this week was like, well, maybe you didn't think this out quite as clearly as you should have. Because if you're changing, tweaking it, and, and two days before we're going to have a vote, it means we can take more time to think about what we're doing. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, listen, I'm not trying to rush anything along either, but if they bring yes, that back. Are, Tony, admit it. You're no, I'm not, Mort. I'm not. I, I just need, I need sports. I need football. <laughs> I, need, I, I, want, I, I want football in September. Baseball, those idiots don't know what they're doing. And, you know, they, they have the most pressure because they have to get something done very soon or they're not even going to get 80 games in. At least football, as we look ahead, September, even October, if they can't play, I think we're going to yep. see it. I, I don't think there's any doubt because we're going to see NHL playoffs. We're going to see the NBA. They're going to finally make a decision. That's and so right. baseball may be the odd man out. And I'm telling you, if they shut it down and these players and, uh, and the union and the owners can't get together, I think baseball is going to pay a real heavy price if they throw this season away, man. Yeah, I would agree, even though I'm on the player's side on what the latest proposal was, it's accurate. But I will say this, I am for 4th and 15, Tony. I, I do want to go on the record on that. Absolutely. I want to make sure we knock you down, lock you down, not knock you down, more. <laughs> we'll lock you down. I want you to go on the record and say you think 4th and 15 should be in, the, in play this upcoming National Football League campaign. Yes, as, as proposed, that with the two per game, yes. <laughs> But as far as the uh, as far as pass interference being replayed, you don't care about the Saints or the Rams, and they're crying, especially in New Orleans. No, here's my answer to that. I don't like all-star playoff crews, and I will say this: when it's that egregious, get the call right. Exactly, especially at the end of a game. That's the worst part. Yeah, that situation in New Orleans. Well, that's, I know. What that, that's what those all-star playoff <laughs> crews do for you. All right. Are you, are you down on the officials? Idea. Are you down on the officials now? <laughs> no, no, but no. he's right, though. I, I'm, I'm down on a system that le makes all officiating crews work together all year long where they're comfortable with each other, communicating, maybe even turning over, helping a guy out, talking it through, and then all of a sudden you put strangers together who didn't work together during the season for the most part, and you're asking them to, to, to officiate a game as a team. They're not a team. They're not a crew. Yeah, that makes no sense. I agree with that. Well, Mark, we hope well, you're, the most important thing for me as a friend and a longtime colleague is, is your health, and hopefully everything's going well. I mean, we have some friends who listen to us, our buddy Ice Rink up in Ottawa, fighting through all kinds of different issues in their, in their lives. So we hope you're well right now. What's the latest on your condition? Because everybody, everybody looks at you and they say, wow, Mort's still there and he's hanging in there. How are you feeling? Yeah, he's barely hanging in there. I'm feeling fine. Got the MD Anderson trip next week, for, uh, but I'm doing fine. Everything, life is good and praying for all those who are, who are uh, 
for a suffering or a lost loved one. Well, Mort, best of luck to you, man, and we'll keep praying for you, and we'll keep watching you on ESPN, man. You're one of the best ever, and I appreciate you coming on the show, man. All right, Tony, Matt. Take care. You guys. There he is, uh, Chris Mortensen, breaking down the NFL. And that, 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 of course, was uh, that interview when Harry Mays and I were on Sirius XM. That was from May 28th. That was Memorial Day weekend of 2020 yeah. when we were discussing the pandemic and what baseball was going to do, what football was talking about doing, and we knew what the results and what happened. UFC was the first professional sports league to operate, but we, uh, you know, we've been thinking about Mort. So that's mm -hmm. what four years ago, almost four years ago, the last actual conversation we had. And Mort was still, as you heard, was still in good spirits. Was going to the uh, cancer center regularly, and then unfortunately, the last couple of days, uh, he uh, he succumbed. To cancer and, and a great 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 friend i mean he was tr he's amazing he was amazing i i unfortunately never got to meet him face to face i only talked to him on the phone multiple multiple times and such a grace gracious man mm -hmm. and um was very open about you know like he talked about um how he would travel with his um he had like a traveling kit with yep. uh um his medications and and the um chemotherapy yes and he would like still work and he would be resting in the hotel room and then i would call him and he would say oh like i'm hooked up to the machine right now um and i said oh well then go ahead and rest He's like no 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 i want to do this because he would he he said this is keeping me going another one of our colleagues at espn back in the 90s when we started the radio network and mark mort of course was there doing the television uh, Mort would come over all the time and do segments with us on ESPN Radio in the early days of the 90s, and Tom Jackson and Chris Mortensen and, I mean, and, uh, and, uh, and Boomer and all the other guys would come in and always like to go on the radio because they, they could talk yeah. more than like 30 seconds when you're doing a TV show. You only know, have limited time between uh, uh, clips and audio and video, and so uh, that was, you know, it's a, it's a big loss for the industry. 72 years old, the great Chris Mortensen. And, and the fact that we, you know, we knew at the time that he was hurt. Oh. And we talked to Beth yesterday mm -hmm. about Mort because, you know, all the friends, we, we all knew Mort and worked with him. So we were all calling each other and saying, how about that? It was so sad. And all over the Internet, you're seeing people like J.J. Like, uh, Watt and everybody who knows of Chris Mortensen and knew about his great career. He had a big sad. impact on a lot of people. Yes. In fact, Adam, Adam Schefter, who was the heir apparent to Mort, mm -hmm. He was the guy who, the first time I talked to Adam Schefter, he was the uh, beat reporter for the Denver Broncos in Denver, Colorado, and then he was named the president of the Pro Football Writers Association of America. And so I would have Chris, I would have Adam Schefter on back in the early 90s before he was pretty much only known to the other beat reporters in the NFL and also, you know, to the NFL Players Association. And, and of course, Adam Schefter later came to ESPN and, he and Mort worked together. Actually, Beth was telling us yesterday that Mort was at the NFL draft last yeah, year. It's amazing. So he kept working until he physically couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And he passed away well, you at know, age 72. I think that um, for somebody, for some people, being able to continue working gives them that drive yes. to continue on. And that certainly sounded like it was the case with, with Chris. Because there was he didn't have to work anymore. Um, but it gave him... It gave him so much joy. He loved football. Yep. Loved And it. football loved him. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. But anyway, we, we appreciate that. I'm glad you found it because, you know, we try to find great memories. I, and I did one of the last interviews with, uh, with Jim Valvano mm -hmm. before he died when I was at ESPN Radio with him, before his speech about don't give up, don't ever give up. And I never got a copy of that. And it was a one-on-one. -on -one. I sat in the studio with, with Jimmy V. And uh, Dick Vitale, obviously another member of that ESPN family. And Dick has gone through health issues on yeah. his own. But he's still also fighting, cancer. man. He is still fighting. And it's, you know, we, we keep losing legends every day. And uh, I mean, and we at least we have sucks. great memories. This cancer thing. No doubt man, about it. Just, it. It, it's, it does not discriminate. Nope. It just random acts of horribleness. When we come back at the top of the hour, we're going we're gonna to have Chris, uh, we're going to have Phil Sims. Sims. 
Phil Sims, of course his son is Chris Sims. Well, Phil Sims was mentioned, and I'm, I'm sure he has great memories. And also, we'll get the latest because the Denver, speaking of Denver, the Denver Broncos today have made a decision. I told you earlier when we talked about the, the, uh, the situation in Tampa where they re-signed their star wide receiver to finish his career there. And now the situation has been straightened out in Denver uh, as far as the quarterback situation going on. Because the Denver Broncos have told, uh, told their quarterback that he's not their quarterback. They are moving on, the Denver Broncos, moving on. And certain people from, on uh, social from, uh, media are yeah. very happy about this. There's a lot of schadenfreude going on here on the Well, Mike the Evans signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers earlier today, but then not that long ago, the, uh, the Denver Broncos have parted ways with Russell Wilson, and they take an $85 million dead money hit on his contract. He will be released after the 2024 year league begins next Wednesday at 4 p.m. So as the league year comes and the free agency season starts, March 13th, next Wednesday, is when teams can start signing free agents. Monday, the 11th, is when they can start talking to free agents. And now Russell Wilson will be free on the street, and the, uh, they made the decision. I, would, would, I wouldn't call this a shocker. I mean, because obviously the situation with Russell Wilson, you know, beginning he started out, didn't look good, and then things got better, and then it looked like he was getting, getting in, into, into the groove there. But uh, Sean Payton announced, we spoke with Russell Wilson today to inform him of his release after the start of the league year, March 13th at 4 p.m. next Wednesday. Uh, George uh, Patan said in a joint statement as well, on behalf of the Broncos, we thank Russell for his contributions and dedication to our team. Blah, 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 blah. Wilson released a statement thanking the city of Denver, several teammates, the cafeteria workers, and vice president of player development, Ray Jackson. He did not mention Peyton, the general manager, or the team's ownership in his statement. They signed him to that five-year, $242 million deal after his arrival, and will take an $85 million hit in dead money over the next two seasons because of his release. And now in the coming weeks, they have to decide if they take the biggest part of that dead money hit in 24 or 25. So the Denver Broncos once again hitting the reset button on the quarterback situation, which they've been doing a lot in the last decade or so. We're coming back. Phil Simms is going to join us. We'll ask him about Russell Wilson as a former quarterback. And a pretty good damn one. And a pretty damn good one, too. And I don't damn Phil Sims because he's a friend. So Phil Sims is going to join us here in a couple of minutes. We'll talk football with him, what's going on in the NFL. We'll have some memories about our conversations with Chris Mortensen. And a whole bunch more in the 5 o'clock hour. Stick around. It's the Tony Bruno Sports Network on a Monday, baby. meant to be Tony Bruno on the Tony Bruno Sports Network. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Bowling Shoe Giver Outer. Mr. Bowling Shoe Giver Outer. Your tireless efforts keep our feet comfy and sanitized with mountain freshness. Mountain freshness. Instinctively, you match left shoe with right, carefully placing each pair in its own tiny shoe house. One wrong move, and we're on the fast train to Blisterville. Is he a nine and a half or a ten? You know why? Because you're Mr. Bowling Shoe Giver Outer. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, mister, and know it's no accident those shoes are red, white, and blue. No, we couldn't with Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Crackers and cheese, honey, let me have a napkin, please, come here and lay your head on my chest.
Thomas. Live in a soft summer night with Coca-Cola. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been waiting, and now it's here. T-B-S-N, the Tony Bruno Sports Network. Make some noise! The Tony Bruno Sports Network. Download the app, tell your friends, the game is on. T-B-S-N. Five o'clock here live in Southwest Florida. Tony Bruno, Miss Robin, it's the Tony Bruno Show on the appropriately named Tony Bruno Sports Network. Busy, busy day today. Of course, uh, Jason Kelsey has his retirement speech today with the Philadelphia Eagles. Spoke for an hour. A lot of great reminiscences and stories all over the NFL. Players uh, who covered Jason Kelsey are giving him love on this day. And, of course, uh, a lot of decisions being made. Denver releasing uh, their quarterback. We got a big signing in Tampa Bay. But a man who was here, who uh, w- he, we worked together, and we were just playing our interview with uh, our conversation with uh, the great Chris Mortensen, our colleague at ESPN back in the 80s. And, and, uh, and, and Phil, Phil Sims, of course, former New York Giant great. We were talking about how we used to go back and forth and he actually joked around when we spoke with him the last time about how uh, how you always wanted one more than one segment when you came on the show, and that's held true <laughs> from back in 1992 to this day here in 2024, Phil. Uh, well, listen, uh, Tony, good to talk to you and everything. Yeah, we had you and I had some battles up at ESPN for that one year, and uh, of course, that's where I really became good friends with Chris Mortensen. And, um, you, you know, he interviewed me before my last year in the NFL, which I didn't know it was my last, but in 1993, this will be a quick story. So the year goes, we do well. We make the playoffs. We win a game. It was a good year for me. I'm driving to play golf on a Sunday morning, early April, and I hear Chris Mortensen on the radio. And he is saying, yeah, be pay attention to the Giants and Phil Sims. Something could happen there. And I was like, what? And uh, I actually ran into Dan Reeves, who was the coach, as I was getting ready to play golf that day. And I told him the story. And I, I said, i got to get him fired. He said, you know, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> well, long story short, four days later, they brought me in and said, we're letting you go. So, And Mort and I were close. From the day that I went up to ESPN until, you know, until yesterday, we talked all the time and uh, we kept in touch. You know, I know it's on Alex extremely well, of course, his wife, Mickey. And uh, it was a sad day. Caught me by surprise because we'd been texting probably just um, two days ago. We were texting maybe three. I can't remember, but um, he was a good dude and um, always fun to talk to. And, and uh, we talked a lot of football over the years, that's for sure. Absolutely. And we will miss him. And, again, another legendary figure in, in our careers because we were so fortunate to get to work, especially me. I mean, you were a great player. And, you know, we had Joe Theismann in there throwing a the football around in the studio. So I was just a radio <laughs> guy there just enjoying all of my friendships with people like Mort and you and, and Joe and all the other great people. I had Jackie Slater on the show last week. You know, he worked with us a little bit too. And his son just retired from the Patriots as a probably right. lock Hall of Famer special team player, right, Phil? You only think he's in his I, son? Man, if he can't make it, then nobody ever will as far as when it comes to special teams. And, you know, there have been very few over the years when you talk about special teams guys that I just go, Hall of Fame? You know, it doesn't even – but for him, it was real. Oh, my gosh. All those – I think it was 18 years. Is that what he ended up playing? Yep. Played till 36 yeah. as a special teams. I mean, you talk about special teams. You're right. There have been great kickers, great punters, and there's always been the argument, should a punter be in the Hall of Fame and should a kicker? But, you know, Steve Tasker's another guy we speak with all the time, and you know you right. work with him at CBS for a long time. I mean, these guys didn't go into the league to become special teams players, but they became great special teams players because they accepted the challenge of what it takes to be a great special teamer. Yeah, you're right. Steve Tasker, of course. Uh, we already talked about Slater. The other, you know, just thinking, I, I think about this. Listen, we had a punter 
Sean Lindetta. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's the best punter that's ever played in the NFL. I thought he was, be- you know, he was, he was to me, he was better than Ray Guy. And I know what everybody says about Ray Guy, but Sean Lindetta, but also just thinking of kickers, Adam Vinatieri, mm-hmm. uh, all the big kicks he made. Is yep. he going to go to the Hall of Fame? I, I would think so one day. My gosh, but yeah, you know it. it uh, everybody always says, "Oh, special teams is a third of the game." Well, it's not really, but it's 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 up there, and it it plays a very important role. It did for us both years. We won Super Bowls. Our special teams were phenomenal, and every kick that had to be made, it seemed like our guys made them. Raul Allegre, Matt Barr, and Sean Lindetta in 1986 were playing the Washington Redskins at the time. 40 mile an hour winds in Giant Stadium. It's just awful. The Duke, which we used to call him, he was kicking 40 yarders sky high into the wind. And the Washington Redskins, I'm not going to name the punter's name, he couldn't get the ball in the air because the wind was just knocking it down. And it was a huge part of the outcome of our game that day, believe it or not. But yeah, special teamers are, they're important. And uh, nothing worse than losing the game because you have bad special teams, that's for sure. Now, Phil, we talked about Russell Wilson was released today by the Denver Broncos. I'm sure there's not a lot right. of surprise, but certainly the big cap hit they take, and now they're going to have to hit the reset button again. And you know, you look around the league. I mean, there have been a lot of franchises that have been, I mean, not lucky, but fortunate, I say. It's not luck. But, you know, like the, the Colts, you know, they, they, had, they had Peyton Manning. They, they, you know, they, they just keep getting good quarterbacks, drafting them back in the day, and now all of a sudden Denver had good quarterbacks and great running backs, but they just simply can't can't get the right fit for, for a quarterback in that franchise. Yeah, you know, there's so much to the fit or whatever you want to say about quarterbacks. and You know, I'm, I'm not picking up for any of them, especially as Boomer and I talk all the time, see just how much money they make. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but good for them. But, you know, the quarterback, it, it, he's so reliant on everything you know who's the offensive line who's the play designer who's calling the plays you know the drafting a play everything about you know we, we uh, and it's it's kind of crazy and it's good for me because it makes it easy on me i guess but gosh when the game is over it, it's automatically well the quarterback the quarterback the quarterback oh my god and then of course and then if we have time let's bitch about the coach uh but it's just the focus just on everything is one and decided because the quarterback, well, it's not true, but it, it's not going to change because that's all the, the NFL promotes them. They're always out there. They're making a lot of money and they're high profiled. And uh, so it's probably never going to change, but uh, you, you got to be, you got to have talent. You got to be tough. You got to be all the things that you know about Tony, but you also got to be lucky and be in an organization that's going to give you a really good chance to show your skills off and hopefully, you know, able to, to win some playoff games in a Super Bowl. If that happens, you're very fortunate and almost lucky. Bill Sims talking about quarterbacking, which he knows a little bit about. And also we saw Jason Kelsey today have his retirement speech okay. before the Philadelphia Eagles. And you talk about, talk about guys, and we don't see it much. It looks like the situation in Tampa, we're going to have a wide receiver finish his career with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the only team he's ever played for. And then Jason Kelsey, who you saw and broadcast and watched uh, throughout his entire career, call it quits today. Yeah, listen, he's a special dude and um, a leader. There's no doubt. Is he a Hall of Famer? I think I just read some something on my phone. I don't know where. Yeah, I he's a lock, Phil. Is he's he a, a lock. Hall of Famer. He's a friggin' lock. Yep. I mean, it, it, He's like I said. One, I was fortunate. I had some really good centers, yep. and they are they are the guys that hold it together. They're the guy that's a quarterback. We yell at them to fix everything. Hey, I don't know. It's not your fault, but fix it. I ain't got time to yell at all the linemen. And then, uh, but he he was that guy. He was a leader, uh, and you know, too, just when you watch him play. He's phenomenal. He's a running back who just got a little too big and had to put his hand on the ground. He's a phenomenal athlete. And that, you know, what do they call it? The 
the Tush Push or whatever. The Philly, yeah, Did not the Philly Special. Push? He talked about the Philly Special today too in his re- in his retirement speech and talking oh, he about did? yeah. He talked about how Nick Foles, the guy with the the he. This is his quote: the guy with the biggest dick on the team went over to tell the coach with the biggest balls to go and run that play. I mean, you know, you don't see that at press conferences much, Phil. You know, that's that's why that's why oh Jason that's why Jason Kelsey is beloved in Philly because he knows and you know playing against Philly, you know the New York Phillies, Boston sports fans. You know, they but they they love this guy. I mean, he is. I mean, they're going to yeah. make a statue to him, I, I would think, and he's a lock Hall of Famer. Well, you know, Tony, he really symbolizes, you know, a lot about Philadelphia. So, I mean, he, he that's what the people relate to him. And just going back to that tush push, I mean, he was, I can't even explain to him how he could be six inches off the ground and go forward against 300 pound and 20, pound men. It was unbelievable. And, you know, everybody goes, oh, every team should do this. I go, yeah, good luck on trying to do it with all the, you need a guy like him to get it done. And I heard him, you know, he doesn't always speak glowingly about that play. That's for sure. He goes, hell, it's killing me. <laughs> and I know he meant to do. Uh, so, but yeah, good for him. A great career and um, tremendous athlete. And uh, listen, I, I will be upset for him if he doesn't go in the Hall of Fame. First ballot. None of this, I read this, who, I forgot who wrote it or said, he's probably going to be the second ballot or whatever. No, he's no. the first ballot Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Because you is. look at the history, uh, Phil. Uh, there, there are only like five other centers who are in the Hall of Fame, and uh, you know, and and I was I got to get the stat because I'm, I was reading all these different things. I watched his one hour because I don't watch normal news conferences, but he spoke for an hour uh, in front of the in front of his family, his wife, his brother Travis was there. They're even getting honored in Cleveland, their hometown tonight. The Cavaliers are giving away Kelsey Brothers bobblehead night. So he's going from Philly to where he announced his retirement to Cleveland with his brother where they grew up to get honored by the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight. Wow. Man, what a year for the Kelsey Brothers the last couple of years. I mean, come on. I, you just, brothers that are both going to go to the Hall of Fame and to be the players they are and the, you know, the personalities and and, you know, it's not fake with them. I don't know Jason, but I've run into, of course, Travis many times uh, announcing whatever, but being there for championship games. And he just comes up and talks to you, and, you know, he's funny as hell and just nice. And he just he, – then he trots away after – Tim. you don't have to ask him. He, he's like, okay, Jason, i got to talk to some other people. You need to – Travis, you need to go. But uh, it, it just says a lot about him, the way they've raised how much they love the sport they're playing and what kind of people they are. They're just, they're fun to be around and they're honest. And that's, I can't say anything else except it's all good. About yeah. Both of them. Here's the stat. J- Jason Kelsey is the fifth center in NFL history with at least six all pro selections. The other four, Jim Otto, Bulldog Turner, yep. Dermonte Dawson, who, you know, and Jim Ringo, and they're all in the pro football hall of fame. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know. Yeah. So, Jermani Dawson, he was phenomenal. Uh, he was like the first center that I watched, and I was doing the game. They were playing the Denver Broncos, I think the championship game in Pittsburgh. He pulls, snaps the ball, pulls around the right side, and just runs over. Oh, shoot. Oh, come on. Bill Romanowski just runs him over. And then I think the Cordell Stewart was the quarterback, and he – turned one way and rolls out and followed him up into the outside of the right side of the offensive line. And I'll never forget that going, Oh my God, Jermani Dawson. He was another, he's a running back who just got too big and he had to, he had to be a center, but yeah, great names here. I, I'm kind of surprised that Webster was not in the hall of fame. I didn't know that he's not in it as a center. So, um, but a lot of, a lot of great centers. Up. Yeah. Because you know why it's never been a glamor position. But I think that we're seeing the more athletic guys now playing center. And I'm not saying centers aren't <laughs> athletic, but but the Kelsey era of, of centers and the Dermani Dawson and the other greats from a lot of Alabama had a lot of great centers. Bill Remington. I mean, there were so, uh, so many great centers who played in the NFL. But I think now with the pulling and the athleticism of a guy like Kelsey, because Kelsey, you're right, he's a running back, and he's got the mindset not of a center, but of a guy who can go out and block. I mean, he, he pretty much did everything that you would expect, that you wouldn't even expect a center to do. 
Yeah, listen, absolutely. And when I follow the draft, I haven't done it yet, but every year I just go, wow, there's three or four really good centers here. And, um, you know, and I think I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, who's the backup center in Philadelphia? They drafted him. Yeah, Jurgen, um, Cam Jurgens. Cam, Cam Jurgen, yes. yeah. I, yeah, I think he's been there two years, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's so, the heir apparent, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I liked him coming out in the draft. I just, I'm blanking on a lot of stuff right now. But, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's almost like the tight end. The tight ends become a new yep. hot topic in the NFL, and boy, it seems like so many of them are drafted, and so many of them hit and become the players that we thought they would be. And I kind of feel the same way about centers. It's, uh, it, hey, if he's the center, he was playing another position. He got too big. He had to move in. Oh, he wrestled in high school. He was the state champion. Drafting, uh, you know. So it it seems to be a little bit of a thing going on with these guys, wrestlers. They make good centers, and I can see why. The so, great Phil Sims. But, now, Phil, you, you know, know me, what about what it, about Moorhead it, State? Do you have any talent coming out of there in the near future? Or do you know of any? Because, <laughs> I mean, you were the greatest. Or is it safe to say you were the greatest player in Moorhead State history, Phil? Oh, I don't know. To say the great. No. Listen, Tony, <laughs> we won. Are you ready for this? My best year in college, we won three games. So... Yeah, but weren't you like the day. weren't you like the top player in the conference? Because you, your team ran the ball all the time. They didn't. You didn't have to throw, right? No, no, we threw. I mean, you know, look, I threw one year in ten games. I know this sounds funny, but I threw for over two thousand yards, which at that time was unheard of. And we only played ten games too, which is now unheard of because you play twelve or thirteen. But um, yeah, no, we threw it, but. I, you know, we probably had like four pass plays. You know, it just it was a different world back then. I actually had a coach at Moorhead, Steve Walters. He was the offensive coordinator my sophomore year. Had a good year, played well, and he wanted to stay. He was offered bigger jobs. He wanted to stay and be, you know, the coordinator, but he only would stay if we threw it every single down of the whole year. And of course, the head coach is like. Gosh, do we have to throw it every down? And he goes, we're Moorhead State. How are we going to compete with all these other schools unless we do something different? And just think of that. We're talking about 19, I'm going to say 1976, a team that would have been throwing it like that every down. I mean, that would have been, you know, we might not have won many games, but we'd have been talked about a lot. So. But you but won some important games for the New York football giants. You know, you and I are very, very, yeah. very bitter, bitter uh, hateful people against each other's uh, uh, fandom, uh, but but your your performance in that uh, 39-20 game over the Broncos, tw- Super Bowl 21, I mean, 150.9 completion percentage. Will that ever happen again? Oh, I'm sure it will. You know, first of all, let me say this real quick. I'll say about Moorhead State. The great thing about it is I started every game for four years, and they gave me a great opportunity probably wouldn't have got that anywhere else. So it worked out great, and I'm still proud of them and do what I can. But will that be beaten? Yeah, I think it will be the completion percentage and all that will be beaten just because, you know, the NFL is more precise than ever before with quarterbacks and offenses. And just think of the Super Bowl. How many times did Patrick Mahomes really throw the football down the field in the game? And the answer is very few. It's, you know, it's it's kind of a league where it's, Pick, 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 and then when you get a chance, you take the shot, you hope to hit it. But it's all the screens. I mean, I'm watching these college quarterbacks, Tony. Oh, my God. Hey, he completed 73%. Well, no kidding. You know, he threw 15 or 20 behind the line of scrimmage every game. So, you know, the the numbers are crazy for these quarterbacks, and that's why I think we'll see just records continue to be broken, set, whatever you want to say. So, We'll see. But it's only one game a year, so my chances are hanging in there, that's for sure, keeping that record. Now, Phil, uh, the Giants situation, looking good? Right. What What do you think coming into the year? Because obviously the Eagles have to figure stuff out, and they got to have a new center now replacing Jason Kelsey, and a lot of other stuff happened. But you look at that NFC East, we think Dallas is going to be back. I mean, you know, they, they're going to get Dak signed. Uh, you look around the NFC East, Dallas should still be good. I don't know what's going to happen with Washington. 
The Niners are going to be good. The Rams are going to be good. But what else do you see as far as the NFC East? Do you see any major changes there? Is Washington going to be anything this year? You know, it, 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 it's really an interesting thing, Washington. I think they can turn their team around pretty quick. And, of course, the big thing is who's going to be the quarterback there. So, you know, it's uh, that'll be interesting. They got skilled people. I think they got a lot of pieces to the football team. And we'll, we'll see how it works out with Dan Quinn and Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator. So we'll see how that works over here, too. I got to, you know, I kind of got to see it to believe it. But, you know, Philadelphia, I got to tell you, too, Tony, I'm still in shock at how they played there at the end of the year. I, I mean, they picked out some unbelievable victories to go 10-1. and one. Yep. And they did. But just watching them and just going, it, it was, I, I couldn't get over it. And the playoff game, I thought, okay, the playoffs, here it comes. Man, they'll be, they'll be sharp. And that, man, hell, they played, they were terrible yep. against Tampa Bay. It was just unbelievable. I'm, I couldn't get up because, and I said it all year long. I just go, hey, I thought probably the most talented team in the NFL, if not one of the top three. And boy, it's hard to say. And what happened? to lose all the games they did at the end of the year. And to really, not only to lose them, but to just play so bad in moments. Um, in Tampa, I just won't get up. I think, oh, they played Tampa. They played them well. I saw the game. It was either Monday night or Sunday night or whatever early in the year. And you know they're going to blitz. So you're going to have things on to take advantage of that. And I think what's really surprised me in that game, big time, is just go, they had no answers. And Tampa just kept going, yeah, hell, let's keep blitzing them. It was it was really strange and you know, I've never seen anything like it, Phil. I've been covering sports for fifty years. I've never and I've seen bad teams that were bad and didn't get better. And right. I've seen teams slowly get better as the year goes on. I've never seen a team go ten and one anywhere and then just crash and burn the way the Eagles did. Have you? Yeah, it was it, right. No, I have not. It, it's why I kept saying I, I don't know. I kept going, Well, this will be the week. They'll get it back, you know. They're motivated, and this is, you know, they'll fix it up. And I don't know. As time went on, it seemed like it got simpler what they were trying to do, and I just didn't see the answers. And uh, like I, hey, you never know. Unrest in the locker room, coaching. There's just so many things that lead to these kind of failures. And uh, they made some changes, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of motivated players in Philadelphia this year after the way they finished up this past year, that's for sure. Now, Phil, I know you have a, your own museum. Well, it's not your own museum, but there's a museum, a Phil Sims Museum in Kentucky, right? <laughs> yeah, in Springfield, Kentucky, yes, which has one stoplight, by the way. By the way, if I'm driving there trying to pick up bourbons and all kinds of great alcohol from the stills of Kentucky, uh, should I stop yes. in the Phil Sims Museum? Um, sure. You know, it's, uh, it's downtown. It's right there. And there's, I've actually put a lot of good stuff in there. And that's, uh, yes. It's, you know, my dad, I grew up there, of course, or not for a while. My dad was a tobacco farmer. Uh, one of the greatest days of my life was I was sitting at the table. And my dad says, I'm, we're going to, we're going to move to Louisville and we're coming off the farm. And I was like, Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> so, it was that was a good day. Uh, the farm, uh, just it's just not an easy life. Even though I was really young, I could already tell I wasn't going to like this life. Uh, so, but we did move out. My grandfather owned it, and we went to Louisville, and you know, grew up in the suburbs. So it was pretty cool. So, do you go back? Do they have like a Phil Sims Day every year at the museum, where all your friends and family get together and you know have a big old uh, hoot nanny or whatever they yeah. have down there in Kentucky? Do they still have hoot nannies down no. there, Phil? <laughs> what did you say there? What what'd you call them? Hoot nannies. Remember, there was a show called oh, Hoot yeah, Nanny. Yeah. yeah, I thought you said that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, listen now. You know, don't be making fun of those people down in Kentucky. I'm not making fun of them. I lived in Alabama and Birmingham for two years. Oh, okay. Because, you, know, you know, in Kentucky, they don't care about winning and losing. They just like the action. <laughs> <laughs> You know, never fight somebody that likes the action. You know what I'm saying? Fight somebody that wants to. He's worried about winning or losing. But you know, I can't believe I right. just pulled Hoot Nanny out of my ass because I haven't used that. There used to be a TV show when I was a kid called Hoot Nanny, 
And then I'm thinking Kentucky. Oh I know about the stills and stuff. And that's and now it's a big time TV show. Those guys making hooch in the stills. That's a new industry. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. And I'm sure there's still some down there that are doing it. Moorhead State was a dry uh, county where the school was, but you know how that goes in college. <laughs> but if you wanted some something to drink, you drove for real into you drove you drove to the bootlegger. Mm-hmm. And you'd pull up, and he'd swing that door open. What is it? What do you want? And you go, a uh, six pack of you know beer. And, you know, I can't even tell you the rest of the story of how it went. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you? Where did you guys do spring break when you were at Moorhead State? Do you go to Florida or do you do it down at the Gulf Coast? Where, where did you, where was spring break for Moorhead State uh, student athletes? Oh hell! What do you mean? I, I went home. <laughs> to go to Florida? You think what? You think I had money to go to Florida? There were no NIL deals back then, big guys. So, <laughs> I went home. Yeah, sometimes I probably went home and had a job for the week, so to have a little money in my pocket. But no, we. Not many guys. I, I don't remember really any going to Florida on spring break and doing anything special because. That was right in the middle of spring practice, too, which is the worst. You come back if you did do it. So, no, I went home and just waited to finish up spring practice every year after spring break was over. Phil Sims. You know, Phil, I love it. This, see, we didn't do just one segment, Phil. We don't, that's one, that's oh, one thing didn't. you always know when you come on with me. I'm not going to be bum-rushing yeah. you out of the building. Well, I do. You know, Tony, I still do that. I go, look, I'm not coming in and giving you – you're going to ask me, well, what do you think about Daniel Jones? And then we're done. I'm like, full of crap. I'm not doing that. You know, let's, we'll talk about some more stuff. Let's get some truth out there. That's what um, I want to do. That's why I love doing this now because I have my, I'm, I'm my boss. I run the network, and nobody's going to tell me what to do. Nobody. Not Bill Parcells. Not anybody. <laughs> not any of the real, real, you know, the guys who used to run with an iron fist. And you think Bill Parcells, um, if he ran this network, would tell me what to do? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Phil, we have one one last question before you go um, okay. um, from somebody named uh, JFMO, uh, John from Mayfair. See if Phil thinks Tampa would consider Russell Wilson. No. No. I, I can't imagine they would think about Russell Wilson. The way Baker Mayfield played this yeah. past year, the way he ingratiated – or. Uh, just took over the team and his yep. personality and, you know, Baker, you know, I hate to say it this simple, but he grew up and, you know, I watched his interviews. I watched him play all year and everything. And man, he hit his stride. You know, that it's, uh, I, I was happy for him. I really was. And I think Tampa knows they have a quarterback that has that personality that can lead people and, and, and charge, get them charged up when you have those days when it's just, Oh my God, another day of practice or this, I don't think Baker ever has those kind of days. Baker wakes up every morning and it's like he drank two pots of coffee. Hey, let's go, let's go. And he's he's that kind of guy. So, yeah, Russell Wilson, I really don't have a great feel for where he will go, but I, I feel pretty confident saying it won't be Tampa. Yeah, I agree. Now with Mike Evans resigning, and he's another guy, as I mentioned, Jason Kelsey playing yeah. all his entire career for one team. Now he's going to be a guy who played every single year of his life in football life, playing for one team. How important is that? Because you didn't play for anybody else besides the Giants. No, I didn't. I flirted with a few of them. I'm glad I didn't do it uh, and all that. But, yeah, you know, it just shows you Mike Evans, he's a big receiver, size is a talent, and uh, he just knows how to play. And Baker Mayfield, I thought, did a really good job of getting the football down the field to him last year. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Good for him. I hope he can finish his career down there. Because I know everybody loves and respects him. I know the organization does. And I know Baker Mayfield does, too. There's nothing like throwing a football where you just go, well, I'm not worried. The big guy's going to get it. And uh, Mike Evans has just proven. And, and now with Baker, <laughs> and Baker being on the <laughs> open market, Phil, next week, I mean, I think the Mike yeah. Evans signing may convince his agent because, you know, because he, be, there'll be attention for Baker Mayfield. But I think the Mike Evans signing may motivate the Buccaneers to bring him back for another year at least. You know, I would be shocked if he doesn't go back to Tampa. I mean, they they think the 
what did you hear this line ever? Todd Bowles was asked, explain Baker Mayfield in one sentence. He goes, well, if we told him to stick his, his face into a fan, he would. And I just said, there you go. That says it all about Baker. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, the head coach said that. If we asked him to stick his face into a fan, he would. And that is, that's what he is. And, uh, you know, like I said, he has settled into the NFL. He really understands how to play. I thought he was really, really good down there this year. You know, he's got a – doesn't get credit. He has a really good arm. He can throw with power, gets it down the field with ease. And, um, you know, and, and you know, he just has a certain type of energy that you love from your quarterback because it permeates through the whole team, I think, for sure. Now, last time we talked, Phil, him. I was asking you about, you know, I know you play golf. Now that you're, you know, it's off season, a lot of guys do other stuff. Are you doing uh, – other than playing golf, What's your next assignment for CBS Sports? Well, uh, the biggest thing is, will CBS Sports have me back next year? So I'm waiting on that. So that'll be one thing. Oh, so you but don't have a con? This you- is just breaking news? No, it's not breaking news. No, I don't have a contract. So, oh, okay. You know, well, I didn't know that, Phil. Sorry. Yeah, well. They got to bring okay. you back, Phil. <laughs> they couldn't do that show. JB and, and Boomer. And Nate Burleson and all those guys, that show would not work without you. And even Coach Cower. I'm sorry, Phil. You you make that show go. Well, that's nice of you to say. You know, we'll see. And, and look, I, I, I don't want to talk about that. But what was the other question you asked? <laughs> oh, golf. <laughs> no, but the golf. I, I golf. Are you going golf. to the Masters? So you're not even allowed to go to the Masters at, on CBS with Jim Nance in Amen Corner and all that other stuff because you don't have a contract? Tony, I don't want to go. I watch the Masters on TV. I don't want to go down there and walk around. I mean, look, you can hear the azaleas right now. Let's go to Amen Corner. I'm not going. Have you played? Have you played Augusta? No, I never have. And just to tell you, I haven't played golf probably in 15 years. You just said you were playing golf last week. No, I didn't say that. All right thought you did i don't know what boy you got hey you better you sure you okay <laughs> i didn't say that <laughs> damn there was a damn. golf reference this in there somewhere had, this is why we had arguments up there at ESPN all the time <laughs> because you don't know what the hell you're talking about i know how do you think i've, I've survived uh, this long in the industry phil no but i know you said hey, you weren't going to play pickleball because it's too dangerous yeah, yeah. And as I, look at all the people. Oh, what happened? Oh, I hurt my t- knee. Oh, I tore my Achilles. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm 68. I act like I'm 68. I'm not going to do anything to disrupt this body that's had enough torture. Okay. So, but I don't like to go. I don't go in the sun. So that's what. That's really what stopped me from playing golf. I just uh-huh. got tired of. Oh well, you know, wear sunscreen. Oh my God, I never thought of that. Wear a hat. Oh, no kidding. Wow. So what do you do then up in your palatial uh, northern New Jersey uh, compound? (laughs) Man, when I see you, I'm going to arm wrestle you. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, what do I do? You're not sitting courtside at the Knicks games, are you? You're not. not, I never see you out and about. I never, I would never ask to sit courtside at one of those games. That's just the last thing I'd want to do. I love basketball, whatever, but I want to sit in the middle of the stand somewhere. I, you know, it's it's just not for me. I've never sat courtside with the Knicks, or I did sit courtside with the Nets when John Calipari was the coach. I actually had season tickets, and wow. I put them with another guy. So you go all the time. I loved it, uh, but no. So not even St. John's. Not even St. John's with the. With uh, Rick Pitino bringing that team back after he ripped them a new one, and they started winning for him. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, yes, I'm going to go to the tournament to watch St. John's for sure. Yes, I am. I've MSG, the world's second most famous arena. Phil will be going to the Big East tournament starting next week. Phil, really appreciate the time. Well, brother. Wait, wait. What's the what's the number one arena? What what what's bigger than? Madison Come on, Square you Garden. don't know that? I always call the, I always refer to Madison Square Garden as the world's second most famous arena. How do you not know what the world's most famous arena is, Phil? Well, once you'll tell me, I'll go, oh, okay. The I Coliseum in Rome is the world's most famous arena. Come on, oh, Phil. Jesus. Oh, come on. 
Have you been? Have you been to the Coliseum? Yes, Atlanta? absolutely. Who hasn't? Yeah, I know. It's I know it needs a little work. I mean, they've redone Madison Square Garden and Yankee Stadium a million times. Why not the Coliseum in Rome? I think they should bring back to its normal greatness and have gladiator fights again. And put oh, prisoners yeah, out okay. there, put you know people condemned to death, and have them go out there and fight to the death with the lions. Wow! Listen to you. Man, yeah. Wow. You that's that's angry. something we need to bring back. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Look, we, yeah. We need fights where people kill each other. Yeah. It's just what we what we have them every day everywhere. So. Well, I, I know. I'm talking about this would be controlled and this would be licensed and uh, everybody oh, would be checked. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. the Pope would come out and bless the uh, the gladiators and the uh, animals, <laughs> and then they would go out and uh, decide it in the, uh, in the octagon or whatever hey, the hell listen, they have. The Pope, if you were sitting there and the Pope came out, you would bur- burst into flames. You're damn so, right I would. You're damn right I would. Yeah. He would burst into flame if he stepped foot in a church at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's always you know I love I love talking to you, Phil. You're just you're just really fun to talk to, and and that's why people. Well, that's why I love having you on, man, because you're one of the genuine people who tells it like it is. Doesn't give a crap about anything. If you don't like something, you say it. You know, and and that's what's great. That's we need more people like you, Phil. Are you coming back? Am I coming back? Yeah. You, uh, you know, listen. That's why I love my job, Tony, for real. Because I get I I want to tell the truth. You know, instead of I listen to people and I go, wow, that is really just a total outright lie that you just said on TV. And you you got a show to set things straight. Yep. And that's what I like about my job, set things straight for the players and coaches. Because what do the fans know? The fans know two things, what they read and what they hear. And, you know, so it's, well, I'm sorry. That's, that's why I love it. And I like following the draft. Hell, I've been doing that too. So I... Phil, before you go, there's one last thing. One of our evening hosts, A.J. Johnson, has been told that he resembles you, and he has called in. I know that he wants to talk to you. And while we were in Vegas, Phil, the the day that the CBS had the media, I was on the air in Radio Row. You didn't come by there at all. I would have brought you over there. I know it would have been – it was a mob mob scene. But, you know, you had the CBS day where all the guys were in the big conference room – talking to the media, and I didn't right. even have a chance to go over and say hi, so I didn't see you at all in Las Vegas for that week. Well, yeah, no, I did go over to Radio Row, I think it was on Friday, to talk to a few people, but why didn't you come and see me in that big room? That because day? I was Are on the air busy? doing my show. I was doing shows. We were right in the – as soon as you came in, we were right there front and center, Phil. That's why I was surprised you didn't demand to come on my show. Kevin Harlan demands to be the last guest on my show every Super Bowl week on Friday afternoon. It's a tradition unlike any other, like the Skins game used oh, to be I back in the day. Oh, interesting. Well, you should have, yeah, you should have came in and carried the ball. Because that, 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 that little press conference, I was like, damn, I was really letting it go. And I said, I'm going to read some stuff that maybe I regret saying. But, <laughs> but, I, but, but we have, well, uh, we have A.J. Back. Johnson, who's a big New York Giants fan, and he's been confused for your lookalike. So you have a couple more seconds so I can bring him in here to, to, to talk? Well, sure. How old is AJ? He's younger than you, Phil. Let's well, bring him I, on. I, AJ, I, are you AJ, there? AJ, you are there. You are on the air. I, I'm here. I am 53 tomorrow, Phil, and I grew up oh, down look. the shore, New Jersey, and from the time I was about 12 to present day, all I all get right. was, has anyone ever told you and I can oh. stop them right there. Yeah. And I said, and yes. Said- it, 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 on Radio Row, Tony made me sit there all day pretending that I was you because you didn't come over. Exactly. <laughs> hey, I, I was going to say, you just tell, no, I'm a lot better looking than him. That, that's the, uh, you know. <laughs> I think he's a little shorter, too. Phil, I, I mean, Phil's a big guy, AJ. I mean, you're, how tall are you? You're not even like yeah. six feet, are you? Me? AJ Johnson, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm six seven. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did AJ? I didn't you go into the? But did... I had to. I had to root for them because because I looked like Phil. I was on a I was uh, on a bus trip one time from the something. My little brother won a trip. I don't know Cub Scouts or something. We were going to Shea Stadium. Him, my dad, me, and a bunch of kids. I was probably seventeen. All these kids were twelve, eleven. 
kids are like, is that Phil Sims? Is that Phil Sims? My father told this entire charter bus that I was you, and they chanted uh-huh. Phil Sims for an hour and a half from the Jersey Shore all the way up to Shea Stadium and back. Oh, and I, I signed your autograph a lot of times that day. So if, if, you, oh, if you're looking funny. for me, here I am. <laughs> oh, well, hey, dude, that is pretty, it's like Boomer. Sometimes people go, hey, Phil, to Boomer. And he goes, shut up, I hate kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, AJ, did, didn't you go yeah, into the conference room when the CBS guys were doing their uh, press conference with the media? No, no, no. I was, I was sick. That was the day when I, I got the bug, so I, I did not get to do it. Damn, that was a perfect I opportunity. To. I could have had Phil rip you to your face. Yeah, yeah. Or you, no, or we could have stood there and you could have tried to pick us apart. Which one was Phil and which one was AJ? Yeah. You couldn't tell. That's the oh, first well. thing Tony said to me. I hadn't heard it in 10 years. And I met Tony about two years ago. And he says, did anybody ever tell you that you look just like Phil Sims? And I said, yep, yeah, I've heard that once or twice or a hundred times. AJ, when I was 53, I could still eat dirt and turn it into muscle, but not anymore. So that's the uh, same thing as real, so. I need to start drinking the Bigelow then, maybe, is what I need to do. Bigelow yeah, tea? There you go. That'll help. Yes, that's it. That's it. Is that what you like drink, Phil, Bigelow wife. tea? Are you the spokesperson? Yes, I am. I drink it every day, too. So it's good it's, stuff. Um, it's a great product, yes. I think it goes without saying. I get, you could give me 10 teas, 10 different brands, and if I took a sip of all of them, I can tell you which one's Bigelow tea. Wow. It Impressive. Definitely is. I mean, it's, I did that. Cindy Bigelow, who runs the company now, uh, put me in front of this big audience with all these teas in front, but there's no names on them. And she goes, sip them and tell me which one is ours. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be the end of me. <laughs> Support. <laughs> I don't get it up. But I did it, and I, I did pick it out. And it was uh, so she didn't give me. Are you sure they either. weren't? Are you oh. sure they weren't all Bigelow Phil? Oh no, I'm sure because some of them were absolutely okay. awful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were. I'm not going to name the name brands, but you know some of these teas. Oh my God, they're awful. Now, Phil, so, do you keep the like pinky every- finger out when you're drinking tea? Do you, ha- do you get that? That you know, you hold the cup and then you got that pinky that has to stick out. You know, Tony, when I when I get a chance to run into you again, you know, uh, what what you uh, hold my yeah, why I'm drinking? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, you know that's what the, that's what the, the the aristocrats do in 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 England when they sip tea. You got to have that finger oh, out. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm no, sure I'm that a lot of people have mistaken Phil Sims for a British aristocrat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's hey, Phil, I get I... a little a tiny cup where I can barely get my fat fingers in it. And I'll hold it up. Yeah. There you go. Yes. You're right. Hey, but Phil, it, but I can it. slap him for you on video, and you can tell everybody what we do. They won't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are crazy. I well, guys, you. uh, AJ, you'll be on tonight at 8 o'clock? No, not no, tonight. No, no, no tonight. There was a fire. So tomorrow. Oh, okay. We'll be on tomorrow. All right, man. Well, well thanks. Well, thanks, for call- thanks for checking in, AJ. And Phil. It's always great talking to you, my friend. It's been a lot of fun. And- yeah, good. AJ, good to, good to hear from you. Good luck. And, you know, don't let anybody give you any crap. They think you're me. So, okay. And, Tony, I you got all of it. Just thanks for having me on. I'm glad things are going well for you. Thank and, you, Phil. And uh, just give me a call when you need me to come on. Absolutely. When you come down to Florida, we're here in southwest Florida. So you got to come down to Naples where everybody comes from the northern part of the world. They're all down here now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite in my on my agenda. So, I you know, when the season's over, it's like, it is great. I really just enjoy staying home and just, you know, living here and eating. You know, we're going to cook dinner here in a few minutes, all that stuff. But, you know, the season is, as you know, it's really hectic. Yep. And it's time consuming every single day. So when the season's over, you're like, oh, man, I'm going to take a deep breath here and relax for a little bit before I do anything. So I'm Yeah, but it's, it's not 82 yeah. in North Jersey right now. I know the weather. Spring is coming, and the weather's going to be beautiful up there. And we got to go. Phil, thank you so much, brother. We'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Thank you, Tony. Let's put your hands together, everybody. The great Phil Sims, guy who should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Hey, AJ. 
I know that you're still there. Yes, we ma'am. actually have uh, a break that we need to fit in before the end of the show. Yeah, because we just did 45 straight yes. minutes with Phil Simms. So we're gonna we're gonna do like. How do you a, know? How do you know it was Phil Simms? How do you know it wasn't Arnold Johnson? I know it wasn't because I know Phil Simms, and you're no new. You're no Phil Simms, pal. There's a lot of people that will tend to disagree with you. <laughs> but, all right, thanks. That was feel cool. better, Thank man. You. Are you all right? All uh, right. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All good. We'll be on tomorrow night. Big show tomorrow night. Beautiful, awesome. man. Beautiful. Oh. There he all is, right. the great A.J. Johnson, Bleacher Brothers. He is Mr. Bleacher Brothers. Okay, we are going to do like a 30-second, just a quick uh, hit and back again. Back, 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 back. We're coming right back. Stick around. And we'll take, we'll read some text, and it's if you want to like call in, it's going to be like a ten-second, uh, because I have to restart the. All right, restart clock. the sun, bitch. Go ahead. It was meant to be Tony Bruno on the Tony Bruno Sports Pancake Network. Cookies. Pancake cookies. Pancake paper, your favorite Now back to the biggest sports <laughs> network on the planet, the Tony Bruno Sports Network. Told you it was fast. She'll probably stop at lunch. Oh, love me some. Give me a call. Love me some, uh, Glenn Campbell. But she'll just hear that phone. Keep on ringing. Another one of my favorite uh, nights in my career, Robin. Glenn I know. Campbell sitting in studio that was with so us. so awesome. I wish the photographs were better. The pictures that we have of that night were really blurry. Yeah, I was blurry that night too. Anyway, yeah, we were we were up really up against it because we can only have segments that are so long before it automatically it cuts goes, us off. Cuts us off, and I didn't want that to happen. No, I hear you. And but we have the shortest breaks. I can't even pee. I have not, <laughs> st- and I, I don't have to pee, which is remarkable. It means I'm not drinking enough water. Yeah, you're right? not drinking enough water because I've been sitting down here since one o'clock. So one. Two, three, four, five, almost five straight hours without peeing, Robin. Can that be done by any man with a prostate situation? <laughs> no, because know. I take prostate medication. And get your prostates checked, guys. It's not a joke. And we have determined that it is not the bend over and cough. Uh, no, that was a, we had that, that discussion last that week. That is a hernia. I, I learned my, uh, I, I was educated. I thought that that was the prostate exam, but it is not. It is the hernia exam is the bend over and cough. Now we have a phone call coming in. We have Larry. Is that my boy Larry? That is Larry, Larry, Larry. Larry out there in Fishtown. Now the weather's getting nice up north, which is great. I see people were heading to the beaches over the weekend because you can't go in the water because it's cold. But it's nice when, you know, tulips start, the crocuses start popping out Mm -hmm. because it's going to be spring everywhere before long. And obviously down here it's spring all year. Except in the summer when it's hell, right? And you know you need uh, you need a hazmat suit to walk around. But, but our good friend Larry, longtime listener, longtime caller, Larry, how are you today, buddy? I'm good. I'm not. I'm long in the tooth too. Let's mention that too. Uh, my, uh, some of my tooth aren't long long anymore because they've fallen out, and I just have little stumps that I have to put a cap over them. But that happens yeah, when you get old. That's you know? all right. Better no teeth at all. Exactly. I but, just. I was just watching had the NHL Network on, and uh, the Devils fired their coach. Isn't that like the third coach that they fired this year in the National Hockey League of the Devils? Uh, not that I know. I thought Lindsey Ruff was uh, there the whole year. I don't know. No, he was. And Travis just, Green it, is the uh, interim coach now. Wow. No, it's amazing how just teams look. teams just, you know, the Nets have keep uh, – everybody's firing coaches now in a half a season. They don't even give teams. They don't even now. Lindy Ruff's been around forever. I remember him in Buffalo, but these guys just go from yeah. they go from one team to the other. It's crazy. It's like every every sport. It's every you know, even coaches are rentals. They go from one team, then it gets canned, and then a couple of years later, up with another team. Look at the guy who used to coach the Sixers. Now I can't remember his name because I'm uh, old and senile, but. Uh, He's Which coaching one? Milwaukee, isn't he now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but he's had multiple jobs, and he's, you know, obviously. But the, the situation is they're looking for a spark in New Jersey. Uh, Lindy Ruff has yeah. been fired, as you mentioned, and uh, they were struggling to contend in that Eastern Conference. I mean, they won a playoff round last last year, remember? 
Yeah, and Travis the first Green, two as you mentioned. The Rangers. Yep, Travis Green, an assistant for Ruff and the former coach of the Canucks, named the, ch- the club's interim coach. Announcement made by De- Devils general manager Tom Fitzgerald a day after New Jersey lost to the Los Angeles Kings 5-1. to one. And so, uh, you know, they, they, they're, I guess they're going to keep their existing uh, assistants, Ryan McGill, Chris Taylor, Sergey Braylon, and the goaltending coach Dave Rogalski will remain on the staff. So uh, you look around in the Eastern Conference, and there's still uh, the trade deadline's coming up, too, in a couple days in the NHL, right? Yeah, Friday. So I don't, Friday, know what the I don't know what the hell's going on with the Devils. But whatever the hell it is, uh, be gone, Satan. That's all I can say. say. But the Florida yeah, Panthers, I mean, the Florida to. Panthers are, are unbelievable. And the New Jersey Devils, let me check the standing. Yeah, they're down there. They're stinking it up. They're, they're three games over 500, though, in the Metropolitan. So it's not like they're, you know, they're not like these, some of these teams in, uh, in, in the West. You know, the Sharks have 15 wins. The Blackhawks have 15 wins. I mean, those teams are terrible. At least, you know, the worst team in the uh, Eastern Conference uh, has 25 wins, 20 wins. That's the Columbus Blue Jackets. So 20, win, 20 and 30 is the worst in the NHL uh, in the Eastern Conference. But the West has some really bad teams. But they have some really good teams at the top, though, like the Winnipeg Jets. And even Dallas is playing great. Colorado. So there's a lot of good teams. Vancouver, Edmonton, Vegas is still hanging in there. Uh, so there's a lot of teams above 500 in hockey. But when you're in the New Jersey Devils and you're sitting there, you know, with 64 points and you're 20 points behind the New York Rangers in your own metropolitan division, you know, and and obviously the Penguins are over 500. So every team in that division is over 500 except the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Penguins are just three games over. You know, the Penguins are struggling, but a lot of these teams are doing it. Islanders were struggling. Now they've won three in a row. You know, the Ottawa Senators, they've been up and down. Now they've lost four in a row. And, and so that's the, that's the thing about hockey. You know, these teams go on long streaks. The Blackhawks, they got the guy with the, the highest-selling jersey, Connor Bedard, and they've lost six in a row. And they're not just losing games. I mean, they're getting destroyed, Larry, destroyed. Yeah. Looking for a number one pick again, sort of like what Pittsburgh did when it got Crosby and Malkin, too. Yeah, but I don't think Pittsburgh's tanking. I just think that they're not as good as they used yeah. to be. You know, it's hard yeah, to tank in hockey, though. I think it's really harder to t- tank in hockey than it is basketball because, you know, I mean, you got to keep running lines out there. You know, you got three or four lines. Maybe you can keep, you know, put your bad line out there. But I, I think people can see that in hockey. They can see that in football if a team's trying to tank. You know, and the 76ers tanked, and you saw what happened. They put out, a, you know, an inferior product, but people thought that was going to be the panacea to, to win a championship. And so far, unfortunately, it hasn't worked for them. And the Rangers did that too. They sent their fans and letters, their season ticket holders. And, you know, the, the old bear with us, we're trying as best as we can, BS statement. You know, instead of just saying we're tanking to get better draft picks. Well, you can't announce you're tanking because that's consumer fraud. And I've been calling what yeah, the 76ers did that. consumer fraud when I was working in Philly. And I was working on the station that carried the 76ers. And I said that uh, what the Sixers was doing was con- con- consumer fraud. And I was brought into the office and scolded for that. And I told him to stick it on, sit on this, and rotate numerous, numerous times. And it wasn't a piano stool to rotate on either. No, it was wasn't. It? No, it wasn't a bar stool either. Yeah. yeah. Jersey's, you know, that is trade rumors. Jersey's trying to get uh, Markstrom from Calgary because he's a really good goalie. Because they've been weak in goal. And, you know, they think that might be, might turn them around. But, you know, the asking price. For a guy that good is like, yeah. You know, what are they willing to give up? Yeah, it'll be it'll be to interesting to see uh, if there's a lot of movement because I one general manager says no, I don't expect it. Another one says, oh, I think there's going to be a lot of action. So I don't know what to expect, but there's going to be a lot of. Uh, 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 by the way, uh, Alex Weinberg, Wenberg, I'm sorry, has been uh, scratched tonight against the Calgary Flames because apparently he's on his way uh, being traded from the Seattle Kraken. The 29 year old. Alex Wenberg not playing yeah. tonight against the Calgary Flames as uh, trade-related issues are involved. So they're basically yeah. telling you this guy's not playing tonight because we're going to trade him. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Hey, huh? feel out of that. And you know who the coach of, the, of the, you know who the coach of your Seattle Kraken is? Former Flyer great Dave Hackstall. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. Yep. Exactly right, man. Yeah. You know your hockey, Larry. 
you know you're hot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go maybe, you know, let somebody else call in. I just figured I'd drop that on you. You probably knew it already, but. No, we had Phil on, yeah. and I saw the story, but I wanted to make sure we wrapped it up with Phil Ooh, uh, before oh, we got yeah, in. We're already yeah. like, uh, right at the end here. Yeah, we're, we're... we don't have any more calls. You will be our final and it's best like call of the day. So it's very easy. Oh, thank Larry. you. appreciate that. Thank you very I much, get a sir. certificate Thanks. or something? Okay. Thanks, Larry. All right. Thank See you, you later. The great Larry. We want to thank everybody today. Great to talk to Phil Sims. It was uh, you know, great to play back the final interview we ever did with Chris Morton. 15 seconds. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. And remember, don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Don't do dope and drive. And God bless America. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. You're listening to Tony Bruno Sports Network. Tony did the best sports radio. In our world here, to live a happy little All right, now you can say goodbye to everybody else. See y'all tomorrow. Anybody read my palm? Can you tell me what that line is? Is that my lifeline there, the top one? What is that one? Uh, I think the only time you have to worry about it is if it interconnects. And we've done so. We've done so. We are.